application. Invocation. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear God, at this time of uncertainties, we pray. When we are not sure, Lord, guide us. When information comes from all sides, help us to discern. When our fear grapples us and anxiety looms, calm us down, Lord. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we cannot touch with our hands. Let us stay connected. When we have to be distant, make us love others as perfectly as only you can. Knowing that perfect love casts out all fears, we thank you, Lord, for this gift of life. Bless our resource persons and members. Please grant them wisdom. Continually bless each and every one of us, dear God, that we may do what you want us to accomplish. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you. At this point, we'd like to uh, uh, call the uh, for the calling of the roll. Any motion to dispense with the calling of the roll? Mr. Chair, I move uh. to dispense with the calling of the roll. There's a motion to dispense with the uh, calling of the roll and duly seconded. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Uh, next is the uh, reading of the minutes of the previous meeting. Any move to dispense with the? Is there a move, Chair? I move to dispense with the reading of the previous meeting. And approval of the same. Uh, so there's a motion to dispense with the uh, the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting and the approval of the same. Uh, Julie seconded. Hearing no objection, the motion is carried. At this point, we'd like to uh, acknowledge the presence of the members uh, um, in this uh, meeting this morning. Um, here present, physically, we have uh, Senior Deputy Speaker, Honorable Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Uh, we have um, Honorable Jose G. Alvarez of the Second District of Palawan. We have Honorable Agustin Dominic uh, Pancho from the second district of Bulacan. Uh, Vice Chair Daphne Lagoon from the sixth district of uh, Cebu. Vice Chair Honorable Maria Rachel Arenas from the third district Pangasinan. Uh, Honorable Ene Eleanor Bulot Begtang from Apayao Lone District. Honorable May uh, Vice Chair Maria Lucille Nava from the Lone District of Guimaras. Honorable Eulogio Rodriguez from the Lone District of Catanduanes. Honorable Florida Rida Robes from the uh, Lone District of San Jose del Monte City. Honorable Gerville Luistro from the Second District of Batangas. Honorable Dante Garcia from the Second District La Union. Vice Chair Keith Mika Attorney Mike Tan from the Fourth District of Quezon. Jocely, Honorable Jocelyn Tulfro from Party list. Honorable Yevgeny Vincente Imano from the Second District of Misamis Oriental. Honorable Salvador A. Plieto from the Sixth District of Bulacan. Honorable Luz Mercado from the Sad from the First District of Southern Leyte. Honorable Ricardo Cruz from the First District of Taguig Pateros. Honorable Stella Luz Kimbo from the Second District of Marikina City. Honorable Jude Asidri, Deputy Majority Leader from Tingog Party List. Honorable Francisco Paolo Ortega from the First District of La Union. Honorable Bonifacio Bosita from the One Rider Party List. Physically present, uh, physically present uh, Vice Chair Honorable Ray Florence Reyes from Party List Anakalusugan. Zoom, sorry. And from Zoom, uh, Honorable Romulo Kid Peña Jr. from the First District of Makati City. Honorable Cheris Ann Hernandez from the Lone District of Calamba. Honorable Reynante Arugancia from the Third District of Quezon. Uh, 
um thank you uh, may i now call the uh Comsec to uh, acknowledge the presence of our resource person this morning. Resource persons uh, this morning. Good morning, honorable chair and members of the committee. In attendance for today's committee meeting are the following: from the Department of Health, Dr. Maria Rosario Silva Uy, Dr. Alan Fabella, Dr. Dominic Domingo, and Dr. Melissa Sena. From the Department of Budget and Management, Attorney Melanie Kilantang, Miss Jemily Boke and Ms. Ruena Marte from the Department of Education, Dr. Lilibeth M. Gonzalez from the Psoriasis Philippines, Mr. Josefino de Guzman, Mr. Mendoza, Ms. Emily Lu Casanova, Ms. Emil Annalisa de la Cruz, among other parties, uh, Philippine Dermatological Society, Dr. Lorna per, uh, Frez and Dr. Lira Tumalad from the Civil Service Commission, Attorney Romulo Concha Jr. from the uh, Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, Attorney Clifford Pascual and Ms. Beverly Bayonisto, from the Hospital ng Palawan, Dr. Milesio ND, and from the Department of uh, Migrant Workers, uh, Mr. Uh, Asek, Jerome Pampolina, and uh, Yusek Violeta Iliascas, via Zoom, your honors, and uh, the other resource persons your honor are on the way to the meeting that would be all your honor thank you uh comsec uh distinguished colleagues and esteemed guests in the agenda of the committee meeting today are two vital legislative pro proposals of national significance um and five um local uh, bills we will also tackle the approval of the substitute bill on the establishment of uh, um, Overseas Philippine Workers Hospital as a level three hospital under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Migrant Workers and appropriating funds therefore. So without further ado, we will now go directly and we will first tackle the approval of the uh, substitute bill, uh, principally sponsored by uh, no less than our senior deputy speaker, uh, Honorable Gloria Macpagal Arroyo. Um, Honorable uh, Macpagal Arroyo. Well, um, Mr. Chair, since this has already been deliberated, I don't have to give uh, a sponsorship bill, but to ask one of my colleagues, since I'm the author, I don't want to be the one to move to approve it. I'd like to ask one of my colleagues to approve the the substitute bill. Move the approval, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. So there is a motion for the approval of the substitute bill uh, establishing, establishing the Overseas Philippine Workers Hospital as a level three hospital under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Migrant Workers and appropriating funds, therefore, duly seconded, hearing no objection. The uh, motion is carried. Congratulations, Honorable uh, uh, Gallery. Any motion to Mr. To Chair? Co-author. Yes. Yes, uh, Honorable Garcia, Vice Chair. May we move that all members who are present um, here and on Zoom be uh, co-authors uh, with the approval of our uh, sponsor uh, authors. Second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. There's a motion to uh, include, uh, with the permission of the author, principal author, there, there's a motion to uh, include all those present uh, physically and on Zoom who wishes to be co-authors, be made co-authors, duly seconded, hearing no objection, the motion is approved. We'd like to acknowledge the uh, physical presence of our Vice Chair, Honorable Maria Angela Garcia. Thank you. So next on the uh, agenda is the um, deliberation of the local bills. Um, we will now tackle uh, House Bill number 1629. Uh, Prince, uh, authored by uh, Honorable Jose C. Alvarez. 
uh, the act converting the hospital, hospital ng Palawan located in the city of Puerto Princesa, province of Palawan, into a multi-specialty medical complex to be known as the Western Philippines Multi-Specialty Medical Complex and Appropriating Funds. Therefore, Honorable Jose Alvarez, uh, you now have the floor for your sponsorship speech. Mr. Chair, I move that my explanatory not be uh, considered as my uh, sponsorship speech. Thank you, Honorable Alvarez. May we now uh, listen to the Department of Health, Director Melissa Seña for a uh, comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Your Honors. The Department of Health interposes no objection uh, on converting the Hospital ng Palawan into the Western Philippines Multi-Specialty Medical Complex. However, we express reservation on Section 6 of the bill. Uh, the regulation of hospitals assured that health services are the same in all DOH-regulated health facilities in the country. Further, we recommend the following that the proposed hospital shall align with the licensing requirements under RA4226, an act requiring licensure of all hospitals in the Philippines. Uh, because the, the bill proposes that uh, there shall be a separate facility in another location, uh, separate from the hospital ng Palawan. RA4226 uh, provides that uh, there should be separate license for a facility in a separate location. Uh, we support the upgrading of hospitals, uh, of the hospital, because uh, the Hospital ng Palawan is envisioned to be an apex hospital and to provide specialty services, not just in Palawan, but also in, in other provinces of uh, Mimaropa. And uh, we also recommend that the increase in the specialty services and service capability of the hospital uh, be aligned with the hospital development plan, which is to be updated. And also, we recommend that the services to be offered in the ambulatory care center and multi-specialty medical center be explicitly identified. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, uh, Director Sena. Uh, Honorable Mr. Alvarez. Mr. Chair, may I have the floor? Uh, in response to uh, the comment of the, the Department of Health, yes, the, you are correct, but the hospital is already operating uh, per se as a hospital. The hospital ng Palawan is situated in a very uh, tight space, 1.8 hectares uh, donated a long time ago. Since 120 years from 20 beds hospital, it's now converted into a 400 bed hospital in a 1.8, uh, 18,900 square meter of land, which we envision to transfer to a five hectare land uh, not so far within the city, which was donated already by the provincial government. And uh, the present facilities in the hospital ng Palawan will be the ambulatory care for trauma, for, uh, uh, that's why the, the license itself be transferred to the uh, main hospital, which is uh, roughly about three, four kilometers away only. And uh, since, since, uh, it's the same hospital. Why do you need to uh, license it? In, uh, we have also in the provision in the bill that uh, the plans and programs shall be designed and operated by the DOH, DOH itself. Now, if you really wanted this hospital to have uh, another license, uh, I don't mind, Pro provided it is designed and operated by the DOH, no longer by the province. Because when it was operated by the province, it was not functioning uh, correctly, and, and it's it's devoid of any uh, correct services. Uh, I pity our constituents in Palawan because the whole of Palawan goes to this hospital, those intelligent ones. We have private hospitals also, but uh, of course, uh, we have to expand in relation to the times. The population has increased, and uh, Palawan being known as the, uh, the best and the friendliest island in the whole world, needs a multi-specialty hospital to cater to uh, non-serve uh, non, non uh, cases uh, encountered by our foreign visitors. So that's why we want to be situated, to want this hospital to be situated in a place where it's not so congested. Right now, if you look at it from the gates itself, you can smell the whole, whole, whole hospital because it's so untidy and uh, it's no longer kept uh, according to standards. 
So we want a new hospital uh, away from this uh, uh, site, and we want the present site to be only ambulatory center for dialysis, for trauma, for uh, consultation, and so on and so forth. So if that is a requirement of DOH to have a licensing on the new site, I don't mind, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Alvarez. Uh, Director Sena? Uh, yes, sir, I agree po. Um, may I request that the DOH works with the team of uh, Kong Alvarez uh, so that we can we can uh, recommend um, provisions in ensuring that the that the new hospital uh, is established in accordance with the uh, existing policies and regulations of DOH, Your Honor. Okay, so we can approve. Oh. Yeah, I, I guess. Okay. I, thank you, uh, Doctor Asena. I guess I just want to um, uh, concur with uh, Representative Alvarez because we also are experiencing the same situation in Batangas. I believe that uh, Batangas Medical Center is the apex hospital for Region 4A. And actually, for to a certain degree, a portion of Region 4B also goes to Batangas Medical Center. It is actually already beyond the capacity of the existing infrastructure and the land area. And therefore, there, the, the concern was that they wish to expand it also to a new property, which is around two kilometers away also basically splitting the needs of the of the functions of the hospital and one of the things that we were discussing was kailangan nga po ulit ng bagong lisensya so i'm not so sure how that actually affects the timing in the implementation of the hospital given that in the interest of public service we do have to we do have to operate it as quickly as possible so i do hope that the doh could look into this further given that we are experiencing these kinds of physical constraints in these apex hospitals. In lang, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Yeah. Chair? Since I'm also here, I do uh, move for the approval of uh, said bill of the Honorable Alvarez. And uh, if uh, with the indulgence of the author that we also be co-authors to the said bill. I second both motions, Mr. Chair. So we tackle first on the first motion. There's a motion to uh, by uh, Honorable uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just just one uh, clarification, if I may, before uh, we approve the motion. Yes, uh, Honorable Mark Go. Uh, will this mean that we will increase the bed capacity of the hospital uh, sponsored by uh, Congressman Alvarez? Now it's 400. Do you intend to make it 1,000? Congressman Alvarez. Uh, my dear colleague, uh, we would wish to increase it as, as much as possible as necessary. But since we are putting the hospital in direct care of the Department of Health, they should be the one to decide. Because in the graph that I submitted, uh, the capacity is only up to uh, like uh, 30,000 a year. And yeah, right now we're we're all seeing with patients, uh, even in the corridor, 55,000 patients are admitted to this uh, hospital on a yearly basis. So it's no longer, the size itself should be determined. Since we have a five hectare site and the, or the, the, the first building has already been constructed and we receive another 100 million from uh, Senator Angara to uh, augment the first building, uh, I'd like to sit down with the Department of Health in order to uh, answer the needs, not only of the uh, Palawinos, but also the influx of tourists that are going there. And when I left office, our tourism from 300,000 has or was already approaching about three, 3 million tourists a year, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would suggest that uh, we increase the bed capacity uh, and we will be the one to determine how many so that when the building is constructed, it will cater basically to the uh, determined uh, uh, capacity of the hospital, uh, Mr. Chair. So if I may propose, uh, if it is acceptable to the author, we will increase it already to 1,000 as a long-term uh, strategic uh, direction of the hospital. Uh, Honorable Alvarez. I agree with the chair. In as much as the target for tourism arrival arrivals in Palawan 
is envisioned the, the, the next five years to be five million tourists. Thank you very much. So you're, you are uh, agreeing? Yes. I agree. Okay. So we go back to the original motion to approve uh, the uh, bill, House Bill Number 1629, an act converting the hospital ng Palawan located in the city of Puerto Princesa uh, into a multi-specialty medical complex to be known as the Western Philippines Multi-Specialty Medical Complex and upgrading uh, the hospital from a 400-bed cap uh, capacity to 1,000-bed capacity and appropriating funds, therefore. I duly seconded, Second. uh, hearing no objection, the uh, motion is approved. And on the uh, second motion of uh, Honorable Reyes, that all members of the, and, se and seconded by uh, Honorable Garcia, that all those present here physically and on Zoom who wishes to be um, co-authors of the bill be uh, included as co-authors. Uh, hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Congratulations, Honorable uh, Alvarez. Before we proceed, we'd like to uh, acknowledge the physical presence of uh, uh, Honorable Joseph Lara from the uh, 3rd District of Cagayan. And on Zoom, uh, Honorable Carl Nicolas uh, Cari from the 5th District of Leyte. Honorable Franz Pomaren from the, Pomaren from the 3rd District of Quezon City. Honorable Alfred De Los Santos, uh, Deputy Majority Leader uh, from Party List Ang Provinciano. Honorable James Ang Jr. Uh, from Oswag Ilongo Party List. Honorable Marlene Alonte from the Lone District of Binyan City. Honorable Larney Levin Roque from the 4th District of Bukidnon. Honorable Mark Go from the Lone District of Baguio City. Honorable Caroline Tanchai from Party List Sagip. Honorable uh, Maria Victoria C. Copilar from the 6th District of uh, Quezon City. Thank you very much. We now proceed to uh, House Bill number 7147, an act upgrading Bondoc Peninsula District Hospital located in the municipality of Catanawan, province of Quezon, increasing its bed capacity to 100 and appropriating funds, therefore, authored by Honorable Renante Arrogancia. Uh, Honorable Arrogancia, you have the floor for your uh, sponsorship speech. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, fellow members of the House. Um, thank you for the opportunity to hear House Bill Number 7147, seeking to upgrade the Bondoc Peninsula District Hospital and increase its bed capacity to 100 beds. I would like to request that my explanatory note be adopted as my sponsorship bill, as my sponsorship message, and with the indulgence of this honorable committee. Uh, proposed an amendment in Section 3, the same we shall now read as follows. Section 3, appropriations. The Secretary of the Department of Health shall immediately include the implementation of this act in the department's program and thereafter. Such sum as necessary for its continued operation shall be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act and the proposed amendment. Furthermore, I would like to inform the body that the hospital developed Hospital has been submitted to this honorable committee and Department of Health. Thank you for your consideration and good day to all. Thank you, Honorable Arrogancia. Uh, may we now uh, hear the uh, comment from the Department of Health, Dr. Uh, Melissa Senya. Thank you, Your Honor. The Department of Health uh, supports the increase in the bed capacity of the Bondoc Peninsula District Hospital in Catanawan, Quezon from 25 to 100. However, we recommend that the hospital remain under the direct supervision and control of the province. At present, there are uh, 11 hospitals under the various local government units in the province of Quezon, and the DOH has three hospitals in the same province. Uh, the healthcare provider network, as envisioned in the Universal Healthcare Act, uh, provides that the service delivery design should have um, one uh, should have level one hospital and at least a level two or three hospital owned and supervised by the province. Maintaining the hospital under the supervision and control of the province shall ensure 
that the province is able to deliver primary care up to tertiary care and the DOH hospital shall serve as apex or end referral hospitals of the healthcare provider network. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sena. Uh, Honorable Arogancia. Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to make um, a request that we should, uh, we should be given um, a consideration because Bondok Peninsula is very far to the DOH hospital uh, located in the nearby district of our district. Um, we have 12 towns, uh, Mr. Chairman, and we don't have any uh, biggest hospital in our district. So if the DOH would um, help our district, maybe we could help the, the patients in our district to have a very good um, medical, medical support uh, in Bondok Peninsula, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Honorable Arogancia. Uh, Director Sena. Uh, thank you, sir. Notwithstanding the ownership of the hospital, the DOH may still provide uh, assistance through uh, capital outlay such as infrastructure and equipment, considering that the hospital is in uh, GIDA, uh, geographically isolated and difficult disadvantaged areas. And our Center for Health Development, Calabarzon, may also provide uh, technical assistance and monitor its compliance to standards. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Sena. Uh, any other comments from the other members? Uh, having uh, no other comments, Mr. Honorable Mr. Reyes. Yeah, having no other comments, Mr. Chair, I move that uh, for the approval of House Bill 7147 as, as authored and uh, sponsored by Representative Arogancha. Yeah. I second the motion, Mr. Chair. So there's a motion to uh, by Honorable uh, Reyes, duly seconded by Honorable Lara, uh, that House Bill Number Seven One Four Seven uh, be approved. Uh, hearing no objection. Uh, subject to style and amendments. Uh, hearing no objection. The motion is carried. Yeah. Congratulations, Honorable uh, Arogancia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, my dear colleagues. Um, We now uh, proceed with House Bill Number 7290, an act establishing a specialty hospital in the municipality of Amulong, province of Cagayan, to be known as the Cagayan Mother and Child Medical Center and appropriating funds, therefore, uh, by Representative Honorable Joseph Jojo Lara. Uh, Honorable Lara, you have the floor on your sponsorship speech. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. The Honorable Chairperson of the Committee on Health, um, Congress, Congressman Cusiriaco Gato Jr. of the Lone District of Batanes, our former President, our Senior Deputy Speaker, Madam um, Arroyo, Honorable Members of the Committee, guests and resource persons, a pleasant morning to everyone. Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues, I'm here to seek your invaluable support for the passage of House Bill Number. 7290, which seeks to create a mother and child medical center in the municipality of Amulung, province of Cagayan, that will focus on the various health and medical needs and concerns of mothers, women, and children in my district and nearby areas as well. It is indeed fitting that we will tackle this bill during Women's Month, a hospital dedicated for women and children. Sa amin pong probinsya at sa buong riyon, ay wala pong specialty hospital na ganito. Considering that 49% of the estimated 1.2 million residents of Cagayan are women and 35% are children, there is no hospital in the province that is specialized and dedicated for their healthcare needs. Kailangan pa pong lumuwas ng Manila ang aking mga kababayan para makapagpatingin lamang sa isang espesyalista. It is unfortunate that most pregnant women receive insufficient or no prenatal care and deliver without help from appropriately trained health care providers. This may lead to poor maternal health, which in turn hurts, hurts women's productivity, their family's welfare, and socioeconomic development. It may also cause development impairments among children due to poor management during labor and delivery. Accessible and affordable health care is a fundamental right of every Filipino. It is our duty as government officials to find ways to bring health care services closer to the people we serve. The establishment of the proposed Mother and Child Medical Center 
will definitely go a long way in bringing special, specialized health care closer to the people of Cagayan and the entire region, not to mention po yung neighboring province na Kalinga and Apayao. Again, with this, Mr. Chair, I'm seeking the support of this committee and my core members in making this dream a reality for the benefit of my fellow Cagayanos. Agayama na po, Diyos Mabalo. Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Jojo Lara, uh, Department of Health, Dr. Melissa Sena. Thank you, Your Honor. The Department of Health expresses its reservation on the establishment of the Cagayan Mother and Child Medical Center in Amulong, Cagayan. Uh, let me state that the province already has uh, Cagayan Valley Medical Center, which is under the DOH, and also there shall be established the Northwestern Cagayan General Hospital in Abulog, Cagayan, which will be operational by the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, furthermore, the health related Healthcare-related statistics for women and children in Region 2 are less significant as compared to other regions. Region 2 already has levels 1, 2, and 3 hospitals, and these facilities are required to have pediatric and ob services or departments to cater and address the needs of women and children. Aside from the hospitals, primary care facilities such as rural health units and health centers provide maternal and child health care services such as but not limited to prenatal checkups, immunization, etc. As such, the DOH recommends to continuously support the development of DOH hospitals in the region, uh, particularly the Cagayan Valley Medical Center in the same province and also the Northwestern Cagayan, uh, Medical Center, Northwestern Cagayan General Hospital. Uh, in building a uh, single uh, or multi-specialty hospitals. Um, uh, furthermore, uh, building um, single or multi-specialty hospital will require longer time and more investments. Uh, we recommend that we support the existing DOH hospitals, which are envisioned and planned uh, to upgrade the service capability to be able to deliver specialty services. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Honorable Lara. Um, Mr. Chair, um, ako po yah uh, uh, ginagalang ko po yung uh, yung yung stand po ng uh, DOH at this point. Uh, it's very unfortunate lang po, no, na hindi masuportahan ni tong mga ganitong mga uh, mga gusto natin na dalhin, no, na mga mga pag-aalaga sa ating mga kababayan doon considering na ang uh, lugar namin po uh, Mr. Chair no uh, we are located in the center of uh, not only our province no kundi ng buong region 2 again na uh, ito inuulit ko po ito considering po yung uh, doon nag nag uh, nagkumpul-kumpul na ang populasyon sa aming lugar at uh, isa pa pong consideration dito ay uh, ang kakulangan sa infrastruktura. Tama po ang ating uh, director from the DOH na nandun na yung Cagayan Valley Medical Center na isa ako po ang nagsulong na mag-increase po ang uh, bed capacity nun. My first legislation immediately after na upo po tayo no, bilang uh, representante ng Tercera Distrito ng Cagayan because it is located in my district no, from 500 to 1,000. And I'm very thankful for that, no, ng support na niyan. At uh, may 10-year plan po yan. 10-year plan prior to dun sa stand ng ating mahal na Pangulo ngayon no, na gagawing may mga specialty hospital, uh, clinics po dyan or hospital or department. No, uh, nakalakip po dyan sa development plan ng Cagayan Valley Medical Center ang pagtatayo po ng heart center, ng lung center no, for the next how many years. No, uh, alam naman natin yung, yung uh, hindi lang tungkol sa healthcare po ang magiging uh, privileyo o advantage ng pag-akyat o pagtaas ng uh, bed capacity ng uh, hospital, kundi kakibat po dito, Mr. Chair, no, yung dadalhin niyang additional job employment para sa aking mga kababayan doon. No? And it, again, it goes without saying na itong economic impact niya sa bawat pamilya considering na mapalapit ang hospital ay mas makakaipon at makakatipid ang ating mga, kababa ang aking mga kababayan doon. Again po, uh, 
in in uh, relation po dun sa kagustuhan ng ating mahal na presidente no na dalhin ang specialty hospitals sa bawat lugar nakita ko po ang pangangailangan ng mother and child uh, hospital po sa amin lugar tama naman po na bawat hospital may pedi pediatrics at OB gyne pero katulad po dito sa Maynila po no bakit merong Philippine Children's Medical Center eh, meron naman yung iba na pediatric hospital na may pediatric care din or OB gyne kasi uh, hindi niyo po naitatanong director my wife is a pediatrician no uh, pag may kakulangan ang referral po lahat is Metro Manila ganun nang ganun yung mga pangyayari and it's not a remote cases ibig sabihin madalas po na merong ganun and for this reason po Mr. Chair no na I'm pushing po sa creation po ng uh, Mother and Child Medical Center so uh, with that hopefully po uh, mare-reconsider po ng DOH no ang position nila at this point uh, Mr. Chair and uh, with your support and the support of my colleagues no hopefully po it will come to a reality itong pangarap po ng aming distrito at masisilbihan po ang buong Riyong Dos maraming salamat Mr. Chair uh, Dr. Sena uh, Sir um, likewise may I suggest that the DOH work with the team of uh, Kong Lara um to to enable the uh, to increase the services of um to increase healthcare services in region 2 particularly in Cagayan Cagayan province thank you sir mr chair okay uh, mr uh, chair yes uh, honorable alvarez despite the reservation of the department of health and with the explanation of our beloved congressman lara from Cagayan i move to approve uh his uh, sponsor bill uh, 7290. Uh, Mr. Che, I also hope that the DOH will consider the case of uh, Representative Lara because that is also the case in Bulacan. We don't have a specialty hospital for mother and child, so they have to go to Metro Manila. Uh, we have the Philippine Children's Medical uh, Center and of course, sa Banawi din. So I hope this will be considered, ma'am. Thank so you, Mr. Chair. is that a second to the motion? Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah. Mr. Okay. Chair. Mr. Chair. I, yes, uh, in support Madam. of the bill of Congressman Lara, um, you know, when I was president, we were number six in gender equity in the whole world. We lost that ranking after my administration. And I was reading why. And one of the reasons was because our women's health declined. And one of the reasons was our maternal mortality went up. In fact, we had our Millennium Development Goals that we established in the UN in the year 2000. One of them was a big redu was a reduction in maternal mortality. And we had a very small reduction in maternal mortality, the smallest reduction compared to the other ASEAN countries. So we were not able to meet our Millennium Development Goal on maternal mortality in 2015. So this is one of our biggest problems in the country, maternal mortality. So I'm all in favor of, uh, of the bill of Congressman Lara. And I would also support a bill if uh, Congressman Pancho files a bill for maternal a maternal hospital in Bulacan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Honorable Macapagal Arroyo. So, Honorable Garcia, yes, Mr. your Chair. problem is solved. Yeah. <laughs> May we... Um, make a motion that all members uh, present in this committee mm -hmm. hearing with the uh, approval of Congressman Lara be co-authors of his very important bill. Okay, so let's 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 act first on the first motion. So there is a motion by uh, Honorable Alvarez to, and duly seconded uh, by uh, Honorable uh, Pancho and uh, Honorable uh, uh, the uh, Senior Deputy Speaker uh, Macapagal Arroyo, that House Bill Number mm -hmm. Seven Two Nine Zero, uh, an Act establishing a specialty hospital in the municipality of Amulong Province of Cagayan, to be known as the Cagayan Mother and Child Medical Center, and appropriating funds therefore, um, be approved. Hearing no objection, House Bill Number Seven Two Nine Zero is approved. 
And on the second motion, on the second motion that um, Thank you, by uh, uh, Honorable Garcia and Julie seconded that uh, with the permission of the author, all those who are uh, physically present here this morning and on Zoom uh, who wishes to be co-author, be made co-authors. And uh, hearing no objection, the motion is approved. Thank so, you very much, Mr. Chair. Whole, wholeheartedly po and very honored po na maging uh, co-author po. Thank you very much, Apo. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Lara, and congratulations. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, we proceed. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence uh, physically of uh, our Deputy Majority Leader, Honorable Jude Asidre. Mm. Thank you. And on Zoom, here with us is uh, Honorable Adrian J. Advincula of the 3rd District of Cavite and Honorable Steve Chongbian Solon of uh, the Lone District of Sarangani. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we now proceed with uh, House Bill Number 6632, uh, an act establishing a level one general hospital with a 10 bed capacity in the municipality of Divilacan, province of Isabela, to be known as the Divilacan General Hospital, placing under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health and appropriating funds, therefore, by Honorable Antonio Tony Pet Albano. Uh, Honorable. Uh, Honorable Albano is, is not around, so uh, uh, Honorable Faustino Carlos D uh, will uh, sponsor in uh, his behalf. Uh, Honorable D. Uh, you have Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can the explanatory note be the sponsorship remarks of Kong Tony Pet Albano? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable D. Uh, may we now hear from... Uh, the Department of Health, Director Sena. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the DOH interposes no objection to the establishment of uh, the Vilacan General Hospital in Isabela, provided that it shall be under the direct supervision and control of the province. At present, Isabela has an estimated bed to population ratio of 1 is 2, 959, based on 2022 PSA population estimate. So it is within the ideal ratio. And the province has 34 licensed hospitals, 25 are privately owned, 8 infirmaries under the supervision and control of the province, and 1 level 3 hospital under the supervision and control of the Department of Health. However, uh, the Philippine Health Facility Development Plan uh, estimated that there is a projected gap for level one and two hospitals by 2025 of 1,846 1, beds for level one and 783 beds for level two hospitals. Uh, um, I repeat that we interpose no objection to the establishment provided that it shall be under the direct supervision and control of the province uh, as aligned with the vision of uh, Universal Healthcare Act, which provides for the formation of province-wide health system and the healthcare provider network. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sena. Uh, Honorable D. Um, nothing to add, Chair. Thank you. Um, any comment from the other members of the committee? If not, Mr. Chair, uh, having no Ray. other comments, I... Okay, uh, I move that we approve in principle House Bill 6632 as authored by Representative Albano and sponsored by Representative D. So move, Mr. Chair. Uh, so there's, the there's a motion uh, by uh, Honorable Reyes and uh, duly seconded by uh, uh, Honorable, Pine, uh, Honorable Macapagal Arroyo that House Bill number uh, 6632 uh, be approved. Hearing no objection, House Bill number 6632 uh, is now approved. Before we proceed, we'd like to acknowledge on Zoom the presence of uh, Vice, uh, Senior Vice Chair, Honorable Anthony Rolando Goles Jr. of uh, Party List Malasakit Bayanihan. We now proceed with uh, House Bill number 5495. An act upgrading the Matilde 
Matilde A. Olivas District Hospital in the municipality of Kamalanyogan, province of Cagayan, from level one to level two general hospital, placing it under the direct supervision and control of the Department of Health, increasing its bed capacity to 100 beds and appropriating funds, therefore, by Honorable Ron P. Salo and uh, Honorable Ramon Olasco Jr., um, um, Honorable uh, Pancho uh, will now be sponsored in their behalf. I move that the explanatory note of House Bill Number 5495 be adopted as the sponsorship remarks of Representatives Ron P. Salo and Ramon C. Nolasco Jr. Thank you, Honorable Pancho. Uh, from the Department of Health, uh, Director Sena. Thank you, Your Honor. Considering that there is there is a projected gap of 450 beds in the province of Cagayan uh, for, 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 level, uh, for level one hospitals by 2025, we interpose no objection to the proposed upgrading of service capability and increase in bed capacity of the hospital. However, the DOH recommends that the hospital shall remain under the direct supervision and administrative control of the province and um, maintaining the ownership and control of the hospital under the province shall ensure that the healthcare provider network is able to deliver continuous healthcare from primary to tertiary care uh, services. The notwithstanding the ownership of the hospital, the DOH through its Center for Health Development, Cagayan Valley, will provide technical assistance and probable uh, capital outlay support uh, and also monitor the compliance to standards. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Director Sena. Uh, Mr. Reyes. Chair, have, having no other comments, I approve. Uh, I move to approve in principle House Bill 5495 as uh, authored by Representative Salo and Representative Nolasco. Second the motion, Mr. So there's a motion by Honorable Reyes, duly seconded by Honorable Macapagal Arroyo, uh, that House Bill number 5495 be approved. Hearing no objection, the uh, motion is carried. House Bill number 5495 is now approved. Um, okay. So now we now proceed with the uh, deliberation of the uh, two national uh, uh, two bills of national significance. First is the uh, bill on psoriasis. psoriasis. The uh, House Bill number 1106, an act establishing a national integrated program to prevent and treat psoriasis as a public health problem and appropriating funds, therefore, by Honorable and Vice Chair Keith Maika, Attorney Mike Tan. Uh, on Zoom, uh, Attorney uh, Vice Chair Tan, uh, you now have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning po sa ating lahat, sa ating pong mga kasama ngayong araw, sa ating pong kapwa, uh, miyembro ng uh, House of Representatives and Resource Persons. On behalf of patients with psoriasis, our fellow Filipinos who are bravely facing life in spite of the extreme challenges of this skin disease, it is my honor and privilege to sponsor this important piece of health legislation. In addition to the explanatory note, which provides a comprehensive explanation of the rationale of the bill, I would like to underscore that this draft was prepared in response to, this, to the discussions on the same subject during the last Congress. It also bears stressing that it is an attempt to answer the recommendations of the Global Report on Psoriasis. To first ensure that people suffering from psoriasis have access to professional medical care as well as comprehensive individually adapted treatment. Second, provide psoriasis patients with drugs included in the, on the WHO model list of essential medicines, including systemic therapies. Third, cover the costs of psoriasis treatments through universal health coverage schemes. Fourth, make available the optimum treatment of psoriasis and its comorbidities. Fifth, 
authorizes patients access to health services that are provided in a way that responds to their preferences, are coordinated around their needs, and are safe, effective, timely, efficient, and of unacceptable quality. Six, urge governments and non-governmental organizations to facilitate the provision of education on the common chronic skin conditions to healthcare professionals, including undergraduate medical and nursing curricula and in-service training for physicians in primary care. And lastly, call on governments to have a role in supporting psoriasis research and in reducing stigma and discrimination. Among the key provisions of the bill, include the establishment of a national integrated psoriasis prevention and treatment program, development of medical guidelines for psoriasis treatment, field health benefits for psoriasis, and social protection mechanisms. It is my hope as author of this measure that a more responsive health program, one that caters to the needs and situations of psoriasis patients, will be developed and appropriate attention will be given to Filipinos with psoriasis. Thank you, and may I ask the committee to favorably consider this measure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair Tan. Uh, since uh, House Bill number 4001 is also a similar bill, we now uh, uh, call on uh, Honorable L. Ray Villoferte Jr. or Honorable Miguel Luis Villoferte or Honorable Chiosi Anthony Oribata for their sponsorship speech. Anyone yeah. from the three authors? Miss, yeah, Mr. Person? Chair, uh, on behalf of uh, the authors uh, Villafuerte, um, Villafuerte, Horibata, and Yamsuan, I move that uh, their um, explanatory note for House Bill 4001 be their sponsorship remarks. Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, Reyes. Um, before we proceed, we'd like to acknowledge the uh, physical presence this morning of uh, Honorable Leo Rodriguez from the Lone District of uh, Catanduanes. Um, so may we now call on our resource person on psoriasis. First on the list is uh, Mr. Josefino de Guzman from the Psoriasis Philippines. Um. Magandang umaga po. Uh, I'm just happy to, uh, to say that the uh, Philippines has been one of the champions for psoriasis in the global arena during the 67th World Health Assembly that was held in Geneva. We stood there with the five other countries championing for psoriasis and 2014, since 2014, we as patients haven't seen anything yet that is being done for us patients. That is why the whole world is looking at us right now at this very moment. A lot of them are watching this proceeding. So to God be the glory, help us all. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. De Guzman. Uh... Next on the list is um, Department of Health, from, from the Department of Health, um, Dr. Uh, Maria Rosario Silvia Uy. Uh, uh, Dr. Uy, uh, you now have the floor. Good morning, Your Honors. Uh, the Department of Health appreciates the effort to call for the recognition of psoriasis. Patients who are affected by the disease may experience negative effects on their physical, emotional, and psychosocial well-being. In addition, there is no known cure coupled with the lack of awareness and support in the diagnosis and treatment of psoriasis. Relative to this, the Department of Health would like to emphasize the following strategic trust of the department and other considerations in line with our current health sector reforms from 2023 to 2028. The shift from programmatic approach to an integrated and primary care-oriented strategy. The DOH recommends integrating the various aspects of psoriasis care into primary care. 
and the healthcare provider networks and ensuring access to appropriate psoriasis interventions rather than taking a programmatic approach to psoriasis care. This is consistent with the mandates of the Universal Healthcare Act, which ensures a healthcare model that provides all Filipinos access to a comprehensive set of quality and cost-effective, promotive, preventive, curative, and palliative health services without causing financial hardship. The DOH recognizes that people with psoriasis experience constant physical discomfort, itching, burning, and disfigurement in severe cases needing specialty care. Further, people with psoriasis has been known to have an increased incidence of other non-communicable diseases like diabetes, psoriatic arthritis, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. In line with this, the Department of Health promotes the appropriate utilization of care by strengthening the primary care system and the healthcare provider network. Primary care serves as the first line in recognizing psoriasis and referring the patients to higher levels of care, which have the necessary capacity and expertise in the fields of dermatology and rheumatology. In addition, the Department of Health has identified and assigned selected DOH hospitals to serve as advanced and basic comprehensive specialty care centers for dermatology, which include psoriasis clinics in the secondary and tertiary hospitals all over the country. The development of high-quality clinical practice guidelines is a clinical step in advancing and standardizing psoriasis care in the country and will also facilitate the integration of psoriasis care and referrals within the healthcare provider network. The Department of Health encourages our stakeholders to contribute the development of a local psoriasis CPG, contextualized in the Philippine setting. This local CPG shall serve as the basis for the creation of benefit packages, clinical decision-making tools, and patient education materials. The DOH recognizes that psoriasis is a chronic inflammatory skin condition which may have lifelong effects on the overall health of the patient. Relative to this, the Department of Health offers services which can be accessed by patients with psoriasis, such as, but not, but not limited to the following. Number one, they can avail services available for persons with disabilities by applying for a PWD identification card. Though psoriasis is recognized as a chronic illness, which may cause disability in the affected person, it is not considered a disability in itself. Hence, patients with psoriasis are encouraged to apply for a PWD ID card, provided that they submit the required documents, including a certificate of disability, in order to be recognized and receive the services provided for persons with disabilities. The DOH recognizes the World Psoriasis Day, which is annually celebrated every 29th of October, to encourage every Filipino to draw attention to key issues and psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis soundly in the global political spotlight. This event raises the profile of this debilitating disease to spread information about the disease condition and address common concerns through various media platforms and activities such as campaign branding, digital materials, and media forums. The DOH also considers, uh, recognizes that psoriasis is as associated with a variety of psychosocial and psychological difficulties, including poor self-esteem, sexual dysfunction, anxiety, depression, and suicidal ideation. The visibility of psoriatic lesion means that social stigma stigmatization and rejection are common experiences for people with psoriasis. The DOH has a comprehensive mental health program, which can be readily accessed by patients with psoriasis, which includes a wide range of promotive, preventive treatment and rehabilitative services for all individuals across the life course. Relative to this, the Department of Health recommends that the diagnosis and management of psoriasis psoriasis be incorporated in the integrated service delivery of healthcare provider networks as individual-based services instead of having its own national program. 
Further, the DOH will strive to strengthen service delivery by incorporating localized psoriasis standards of care and practice guidelines in the national practice guidelines to ensure that patients with psoriasis receive safe, effective, timely, and patient-centered care. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Dr. O. In short, you are in support of the bill? No, sir. We are uh, supporting that the psoriasis care be integrated in the existing healthcare provider network, but not a standalone program because that is not the current trust of the Department of Health. Um, you are not supporting because of? Because, sir... Uh, maybe in one or two sentences or maybe three reasons why you are not supporting? Uh, for one, the Department of Health no longer... Uh, that trust of the Department of Health at present is not anymore to do disease-based programs, rather integrate services for diseases into our healthcare system. That is through the primary care and then to upper uh, levels of care through the healthcare provider network. So we, we, we no longer do uh, disease-based programs. And besides that, the burden of disease of psoriasis is very low compared to other diseases. May I know how many, uh, what is the uh, prevalence or incidence of uh, psoriasis in the Philippines? It's 1.5 to 2 percent. Million? Uh, percent. 2 percent of 106 million Filipinos, equivalent to 1.6 million. So 1.6 is That's still not uh, low? Yeah, ah, it's still... You don't consider that a significant number, considering that uh, psoriasis is uh, not only a physical disease, but it is also a psychological, and it has also it's a social disability and uh, emotional disability that goes with it. Yes, Pastor. sir. I you don't find it uh, appropriate to give a special attention to this uh, unique, I would say a unique uh, in the sense that it is not purely physical uh, disease? Yes, sir. We recognize and we appreciate the intent to create a special program for psoriasis. However, this special care can be availed of in our uh, system, even without the program. And the rate compared to other diseases is very low. Usually the burden uh, is at 22 per 100,000, but for psoriasis, it's only 1.5 to 2 percent. Uh, Honorable uh, yeah. Macapagal Arroyo. Um, one of the arguments the OH is giving against a specific program is yes. that the, the prevalence is low compared to the others. Yes. Um, can, can the department provide the committee with, um, with a, co an, a comparison of the prevalence of all the major diseases? Uh, we'll do both. Thank you. Uh, can you submit uh, to the uh, committee the uh, the data that uh, Honorable Macapagal Arroyo is uh, asking? Yes, sir. Um, we will submit the data. So going back to uh, psoriasis, um, I was um, a little bit uh, concerned. I am a little bit concerned with your statement that uh, it should be uh, uh, be part of the the regular. Uh, program of the Department of Health, uh, bring it, bringing it down to the primary, primary yeah. care level. But you know, ang psoriasis kumisan kahit, kahit doctor, hindi ganun kadali i-diagnose ang psoriasis. Uh, sometimes you need to refer these patients to a, a specialist, a dermatologist or a rheumatologist. Ako mismo, I mean, in a full-blown psoriasis, kuminsan madali para sa isang doktor. But sometimes psoriasis uh, can present in various forms, especially the, the incipient, if you might call that, or the mild forms. So, paano mo ma maasahan yung sa primary level yung uh, early diagnosis ng psoriasis? And uh, balik ako dun sa sinabi ko na ang psoriasis ay uh, kakaiba in the sense na napakalaking uh, disability, uh, not only on the physical aspect, but the social 
uh, the Special. mental uh, disability uh, and psychological disability that comes with it. So I think we should, um, uh, I don't know if we, maybe the author is uh, physically here. Um, uh, we can also uh, ask from the uh, comment or reaction uh, from Honorable Mike Tan. Uh, uh, but uh, before that, uh, Vice Chair, we'd like to acknowledge the uh, physical presence of um, uh, Honorable uh, Stella Luz Kimbo from the Second District of Marikina City, and uh, on Zoom, Honorable Ernesto Junisha Jr. from the First District of Manila. Um, of course, uh, uh, the physical presence of uh, one of the author, uh, Honorable Vice Chair, Honorable Mike Tan. Uh, before we ask, uh, we will listen to the other comments. We will hear first uh, the other resource person um, from the Philippine Dermatological Society, Dr. Cynthia Siriaco Tan. Dr. Tan? Good morning, sirs and madams. Yeah. Um, on behalf of the Philippine Dermatological Society, we really strongly support the two bills because honestly, um, for me in my 20 plus years of practice, I've seen the wide spectrum of psoriasis and how it really affects the patients. Uh, with due respect to DOH, we understand the programs that you have um, tried to institute, but ma'am, this is really a very difficult way for the patients sometimes to get into the programs. And um, I feel our census for psoriasis is not really properly reported. Patients have no direct access at, uh, at times. And I've seen young patients with psoriasis who really lost their lives just because of the burden of the disease. So I feel um, in the society, we really strongly support the two bills written. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Dr. Tan. Um... From the Philippine Rheumatology Society, uh, Dr. Ronaldo Divera. So good morning. I'm from the Philippine uh, Rheumatology Association. Po. So um, the Philippine Rheumatology Association 100% supports these bills. Um, first off, it, it's not just that uh, a lot of people with psoriasis are actually underdiagnosed. Yes. And the, there's a scarcity of specialists who could see them and treat them. For instance, the rheumatologists in the Philippines, we're about uh, around 200. And, and with that being said, it's not just being diagnosed, it's also getting access to the medications for these patients. So I'd like to drive home the point as a, as a patient myself with psoriasis, as an internal medicine doctor, as a physician, and as a subspecialist with, uh, in rheumatology, psoriasis is an autoimmune condition where the, uh, where the immune system is overactive and it attacks the body, and it's just not skin-related. It's a spectrum of disease that, in can, that it can include the nails, the digits, the enthesitis, the spine, and the peripheral joints. So psoriatic arthritis, it's, it's a condition where the, your joints can become swollen, stiff, and painful. It can lead to deformities, and it is a disability. So psoriatic arthritis, it, it affects uh, males and females equally, and the prevalence can be as high as 30%. And some estimates predict that 31% of the patients with, psori with psoriasis can develop psoriatic arthritis even as late as 30 years down the road. So patients with psoriasis exhibit a higher prevalence of inflammatory back pain and spondyloarthritis, which in itself, these are, uh, these, uh, these are additional di di uh, disabilities. So the quality of life with patients with uh, psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, it's decreased. Uh, quality of life is the standard of health, comfort, and happiness as experienced by the individual, by the patient. And physically disabled uh, people, patients with psoriasis and with psoriatic arthritis, they, we have a poor quality of life. Uh, they, we experience more restrictions in social activities compared to healthy people, leading to a lower level of well-being. So these predictors of the quality of life uh, for the com these components would include the gender, 
uh, self-reported physical level activities, use of disability aids and tools, and depression. So anxiety, depression, self-efficacy could also significantly affect the mental component of an individual. And this is a cycle that must be broken and it must be recognized as a standalone. These bills uh, for this unique disease will definitely contribute greatly, not just to the well-being of the patients with psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis, but it will help these patients contribute and become assets for themselves, for their families, and also for the community. So, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Devera. Uh, from the Philippine Medical Association, uh, Dr. Pascual Nag Nagit. Uh, Dr. Pascual Nagit. Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning. Uh, yes, uh, you have the floor. Yes, po. Uh, I'm Dr. Pascual Nagit. Of course, uh, in, uh, in behalf of the Philippine Medical Association, we strongly believe that the uh, that psoriasis should not be treated in, in the primary level alone. Uh, that there it should be given much attention and much care from the specialists. That's all, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pascual Nagit. From the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, PhilHealth, Dr. Albert Domingo. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and honorable members of uh, the committee. PhilHealth commends the authors of House Bill numbers 1106 and 4001 for their initiative to legislate health care for Filipinos living with psoriasis. Hindi ginusto ng ating mga kababayang may psoriasis na magkaroon nito. Hindi sila dapat maghirap dahil sa gastos para sa pangangalaga nito katulad na rin sa iba pang mga sakit. Para makatulong ang PhilHealth na makabayad ng wasto at sapat na serbisyong pang psoriasis, kailangan po namin ng detalyadong gabay kung ano nga ba ang dapat gawin para sa isang taong may psoriasis. Kailangan namin ng listahan ng mga gamot, kagamitan at antas ng healthcare worker, pati na rin ng mga nakatakdang paraan ng paggamot para alam namin kung ano ang dapat bayaran at bilhin. The two house bills have slightly different approaches as to who will provide PhilHealth the standards or mechanisms for the healthcare needed by people with psoriasis. In House Bill 1106, this will come from a program under the DOH. In House Bill 4001, it will come from a council attached to the DOH. Mr. Chair, regarding the said council, it may be prudent for PhilHealth to be excluded as a member. This is consistent with the health financing principle of maintaining a purchaser-provider split. It would be improper for the purchaser to be organizationally part of the group of providers who will be formulating the standards meant for funding. We also ask the committee to reconsider a power proposed by House Bill 4001 to be granted to the Council, particularly the ability to set quality and accreditation standards. Still with reference to maintaining a purchaser-provider split, the law already assigns the power to set standards, rules, and regulations necessary to ensure the quality of care and to formulate and implement guidelines on quality assurance and healthcare provider arrangements to fill health as the nation's strategic purchaser for healthcare. Perhaps, Mr. Chair, the Council could recommend instead of set the standards. We leave it to the wise decision of the House as to the optimal organizational design, whether program or council. What is important for PhilHealth is that an accountable body is mandated to produce these scientific standards of care that the Health Technology Assessment Council or HTAC can then evaluate for the UHC Act. In that regard, PhilHealth strongly supports the two bills as they recognize and align with HTA as a proper transparent and standardized prioritization setting process, which will be required along with an actuarial feasibility study before the development or expansion of any PhilHealth benefit. We sincerely thank the authors for recognizing that this will help avoid the inequitable allocation of our limited funds for healthcare services. We therefore ask the committee to please reconsider some provisions in the draft bills that may be inconsistent with the standardized prioritization process they also require. For example, Section 12 of HB 1106 and Section 21 of HB 4001, we submit that such determination of priority population groups are better done as part of the benefit design process subject to HTA and actuarial feasibility study instead of legislating them into statutory law. Section 20 of HB 4001 may also be a better avoided as it enshrines a privately owned concept and program in law to avoid establishing a monopoly 
because having that may lead to a decline in quality if not managed well. I am referring po to the proprietary uh, name, yung Psoriasis uh, Philippines and the SOAR Coach Program. We are not against the program, Mr. Chair. What we're saying is let's not call it by its proper name inside the Republic Act. We can refer to it, its general non-branded features or qualities of such desirable components so that when the HTA evaluates, we can probably consider it as part of the benefit design. The UHC Act already does require PhilHealth to expand its benefits and to implement a comprehensive outpatient benefit in accordance with the recommendations of the HTAC. This comprehensive outpatient benefit will be known as PhilHealth Consulta Plus, and this includes the standards for the primary care screening, detection, and diagnosis of psoriasis as part of general medical consultation. Mr. Chair, and this is a bit off script, but I was uh, looking at the chat box. And dami pong comments uh, about uh, primary care. It's good that we are discussing it. Konti nga lang po ang uh, specialists at ang mga healthcare workers na kayang makakilala. Ako rin po, Mr. Chair, as a doctor, hirap rin po ako sa derma and in particular sa recognition of psoriasis. But as a general practitioner who sees more patients compared to our esteemed colleagues who are specialists na mas konti sa aming mga GPs, baka importante na yung primary care providers ang mapalakas na makilala nga namin ang psoriasis out in the field. And feel that is ready to provide for these primary care providers through the Consulta Plus program. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and we submit po. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Albert Domingo. Um, may we hear from uh, Honorable Tan, uh, one of the uh, authors. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning po ulit. Uh, sa ating lahat. Since uh, the DOH has manifested its opposition to, to the bill, uh, I know I understand naman po yung thrust ng DOH ngayon. Pero can, it, can they guarantee na mabibigyan ng primary care yung ating mga psoriasis patients? Kasi I, I understand the sabi na po kanina is kulang po yung specialist uh, sa primary care po kaunti lang po yung may kaya so since ang uh, argument nga po ng uh, DOH is to integrate it sa primary care, primary care network can they guarantee na may yung adequate services sa ating mga psoriasis patients DOH, uh, can you answer the uh, question of Honorable Tan? Can you guarantee that the primary health uh, uh, program of the Department of Health can address the uh, early diagnosis and management of uh, psoriasis? Thank you, Mr. Chair. The DOH supports the intent of the bills that will enhance access of psoriasis patients to healthcare services. Dermatology is one of the 16 priority specialties along with brain and spine and mental health and others. The DOH Strategic Trust is an integrated healthcare delivery. Therefore, our recommendation is not a specific program for psoriasis, but to integrate its care in the healthcare system. Uh, the Resource Stratified Framework provides that the services for derma and other specialties uh, must be available per health facility level from the primary care up to the specialty centers. The DOH will work on clinical practice guidelines for psoriasis to guide healthcare providers and field health as well. Likewise, the DOH will work on strengthening the primary care services to enable proper recognition and referral of psoriasis patients. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Press from the uh, Philippine Dermatol Dermatological Society. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Dr. Lorna Fres, past president of the PDS of the Philippine Dermatological Society in 2005-2006, where we started collaborating with Psoriasis Philippines. We have done a lot of work. Um, we attribute the uh, Joseph de Guzman's skill and the capability, you know, putting the Philippines globally. Idol tayo worldwide. Our psoriasis walk, mga ganon. Patients come to us after that. Psoriasis na hubato. They had become aware. But unfortunately, you know, uh, thank you po sa DOH, no? Yung real, we realize that, that there is a need for primary care. Ito nga UHC. We're optimistic. We're hopeful that we can help primary um, care physicians get to know more 
not only do you see red and scaly, there are variants that have pus in them and they are misdiagnosed and mistreated as bacterial infection when these pus are sterile. And then they get all over. You see some patients here right in front of you, so you know how it is. The disability may lead to suicide or just an intention to commit suicide. And we don't want that. Then the global uh, leading causes of mortality, non-communicable diseases, NCDs of uh, stroke, uh, MI, these are all comorbids of psoriasis. So we cannot undermine the, the, the importance of the disease psoriasis. It is not just skin deep. Dati dati akala namin skin lang and joints. O meron na palang heart. And this is antagal na, ang dami ng mga evidence to support that. So we don't, um, we don't, this is lost productivity at work, in school. You just imagine, there are many studies already that have shown that people with psoriasis, especially those who have started very young in life, they refuse to get married na lang. They refuse to follow their dreams to become this and that professional kasi ang daming gastos pa nilang gagawin. Hindi na sila mga nganak, hindi na sila mag-aasawa kasi they cannot provide for their families. They will be burdened to their families. This is how, how, how heavy it is. On a personal note, I'd like to let you know that in, in the PDS, we tried our best to create a CPG na sponsored ng Philippine Dermatological Society. But there are other concerns and advocacies aside from psoriasis by the society. We don't have enough funds for that. Now, recently, in the past two years, there were two occasions that DOH granted uh, ano, ano, parang a grant for certain CPG development budget, correct? I wrote down twice, applied. It was denied. So, ang ganda ng idea, yes, we need a CPG for the DOH, the government of the Philippines, to be guided as to how do we really handle, especially in, the, in terms of uh, treatment, no? kasi CPG nga, clinical practice guidelines. However, yung ap attempt namin to get uh, it funded by the government is turned down. Dalawang beses na ako nag-apply. Hindi ho na-approve. And this is uh, endorsed by the Philippine Dermatological Society current president. So, ibang disease. Hindi ko nasasabihin ko anong disease sa derma. Hindi naman ho yun ang bigat ng burden na kailangan ng mga pasyente namin. So, PhilHealth. Matagal na ho. Several years ago na now we had sat down in PDS to create a program for, you know, phototherapy is the use of ultraviolet light as a, one of the means to treat or control. There's no treatment, just control of the disease, of the skin lesions. But up to now, patients are paying for this. Nag, nag draw na kami ng program kung ilang sessions, parang dialysis, kung ilang sessions ang dapat sana ma-support ma, ma, ma ng mag-grant ma, free ng field health. Wala pa hong nising kung duling na nangyayaring ganyan. So we have walked through psoriasis, I mean, Sir Rojas Boulevard in Mandaluyong, public knowledge. We, we, we had celebrities, you know, you know, hugging, you know, being interviewed and being photographed, hugging patients with psoriasis. Hanggang dun lang kami. We are waiting for action from government po. Oo. Nag-retire na po ako sa PGH, but I still do private practice. And nag-retire na lang ako ang tagal na nung 2005-2006 na president ako. Katiting pa lang ho, public information lang kulang pa. We are not undermining the role of primary care physicians. In fact, we, we teach. No? Dr. Stan was also a teacher in PGH at, at, at a certain point in time. Tatuturo kami ng mga UP College of Medicine sa UST, as mga universities, no? Colleges of Medicine. Tinuturo namin yan sa mga pasyente, sa mga estudyante. Pero along the way, syempre nag-iba ng specialty or masyado ng maraming kailangang aralin ng GP, hindi na ho yan na napapansin. Kala, buhunin lang. Psoriasis na pala. And because there are future complications and comorbidities, hindi sila na dadirect, ito mag-ingat ka, huwag ka magpapataba kasi magkakaroon ka ng risk. Ng Ang dami pa hong ituturo sa pasyente kung na-detect na ng maaga to prevent all these comorbidities from happening at starting at a very young age. Sorry po. Sinabi ko. Thank you, uh, Dr. Fress. Um... Mr. Chair. Janet Garin, Mr. Chair. Janet Garin, sir. Janet, Mr. Chair. 
Yes, uh, Honorable Garin, uh, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Apologies, I can't open my video because I have um, an unstable connection. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I'm coming from the legislative point yes, of view. Yes, and uh, coming from the legislative point of view and with exposure in the executive, specifically the Department of Health, my take here is not, it's not really about creating a, a, a law regarding psoriasis or not. Kaya ginagawa itong batas na ito dahil hindi nabibigyan ng atensyon na nararapat sa sakit na ito. First and foremost, Mr. Chair, if only our patients inflicted with psoriasis is given the exact attention that they need from our government, then we will not be tackling this bill all over again. Ang nangyayari po kasi, kinakatakutan na gastusan ang isang sakit na alam na alam naman natin, malaki ang dagok sa ating komunidad. Mr. Chair, Your Honors, if, if, if I may request you to look back several years ago, psoriasis was never given any attention. In fact, the only point, na, one of the points na talagang nabigyan ito ng malaking attention was that when a, when a network featured it as a flesh-eating disease that actually gave a scary impression of the patient and the town where the patient was residing. Na akala mo nakakahawa, eh hindi naman totoo. Na akala mo talagang dapat pandirian na hindi naman totoo. So instead of caring for our patients and contributing to the program, it actually pushed the morale of psoriasis patients down the drain. And why? This is because government has not been giving it the attention it so requires. I do respect the contention of the Department of Health that they have issues on prioritization. But Mr. Chair, we also have a bigger problem in the Department of Health. And that is the fact that they don't really have the exact figures of incidence and prevalence in our country because most are underdiagnosed, many are misdiagnosed. We don't have a, the correct people reporting on the ground. It's garbage in, garbage out. I'm sorry to say that. Moving forward, ano po ba ang kailangan? First, it should be given attention by the government because the impact on the patient is very much, so much so that it pushes them to withdraw from society. It pushes them to like and to be happy about living in this world. And that is a mandate that the Department of Health should cater. Eh, hindi po ba ang, uh, ang buhay ay buhay? Now, if we have the president now, PBBM, BBM simply means bawat buhay mahalaga. So what is the problem? I, I believe sometimes the council um, is met with a few objections because of the accompanying expense. But they believe the Department of Health should also go back, and this is where good um, oversight functions of Congress should play into action. Why? Because the system or the structure, the organizational structure of the Department of Health was placed in such a way na merong isang programa na ka sa isang grupo or isang tao. People can actually multitask. You, 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 you don't have to be an expert, like you don't have to be a dermatologist to handle the program of psoriasis. You can be the facilitator. And what do we mean by this? Even without the bill, kaya nga nagkakaroon ng push to have this legislated because the illness is not given the correct attention that they deserve. Proof of this, they're being misdiagnosed, underdiagnosed, underreported because people are not aware. And it's not a huge expense for DOH to fund the programs or the, the awareness of our rural health physicians and other general practitioners. But this should come from the Department of Health. Marami po sa mga meetings, consultations, and events of the Department of Health that can be done by, by Zoom. Pero ang kailangan paggastusan ay yung ating mga external experts who, shall, who can be identified by tapping the specialty societies and fund 
their travel to the villages, to the provinces where they can liaise with people because we have a devolved health institution. Second, Mr. Chair, another proof that this has been a neglected disease. The medicines that we are using to care for our psoriatic patients is very expensive. No, we, we talked about HTAC, but HTAC is focusing on illnesses that the government will invest. But that is not just the mandate of the Department of Health. The Department of Health has its in umbrella, the FDA. And FDA has records of the landed costs of all these medicines. So bakit hindi natin bigyan ng paraan na maibsan ito because the reduced cost will actually redound to a wider reach of patients. Third, Mr. Chair, marami pong magagandang ginawa ang PhilHealth. Unfortunately, I, I am not referring to any particular person, but the organization has also accepted many packages that are not supposed to be covered by health insurance. But psoriasis has a very high impact on the economic status of a family inflicted with a, a, a family with a patient with psoriasis. And that is one that that is one aspect that we should address. Yung ngating mga ibang public health programs should not be kung kulang ang pera ng PhilHealth, hindi natin dapat kinukuha yung ibang packages that will not redound to reduction of care of a specific illness. We have to delineate the costs between PhilHealth and the Department of Health. Ang PhilHealth ay health insurance, ang ibig po sabihin nito, bawat out-of-pocket expenditure of a Filipino patient should be reduced. The programs on preventive care should be funded by the Department of Health. If we are seeing that funds are not enough, funds will never be enough. However, prioritization is the name of the game. Yung mga ikot ng ibang activities ng Department of Health can instead be tweaked to fund the specialty organizations para yung ikot nila sa mga probinsya, yung kanilang training at pakikipag-usap sa mga hospital, mga doktor at health centers will actually bring back programs that will help our psoriatic patients. We cannot just pass on to the private sector the cost of this illness because it's a debilitating disease and it is an illness that does not take a week to cure. Pwede siyang bumalik, marami pa siyang inaaral. And Mr. Chair, lastly, we have had a lot of funds spent on research. In fact, karamihan ng research e paulit-ulit. The research budget that PhilHealth has, the research budget that DOST has, the research budget that DOH has, this should now be looked into and it should be purposely addressed to understanding the needs, the plight, the treatment that these patients need. Because unang-una lang, kung titingnan po natin, ando doon ba siya? Wala. Wala siya doon sa research funds. But we can actually gather a lot of data from our patients. Ando doon ba siya sa prioritization and reduction the cost of medicines? Wala. Ando doon ba siya sa mga iniikot at binabiyahe ng Department of Health para pag-usapan sa baba? Because when the department goes down, it should be mingling, existing, and coordinating, collaborating with a devolved institution. And we have to involve our private specialists. But we cannot let them go there and spend their own money. These programs are laudable, easy to fund. It's just that it's not being given a priority. That is why we are now here in Congress. They are running to us because they need us to knock at the doors of our government agencies. It's not just about an illness that is limited to the skin. It's all about life that matters and it's our mandate. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair uh, Garin. Yes, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Makapagalawa. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, um, the uh, Vice Chairman pointed out some things that are, I think, significant even for the function of Congress as a whole. The oversight function is really very important and something that we should do more. 
because we can pass this bill, but it is not an appropriation measure. It's just an authority to appropriate. And if the DOH and the DBM will not submit the budget for the NEP and the General Appropriations Act, this will be another one of the dead letter laws, the Mona Lisa laws that, that lie there and die there. So um, um, taking off from what Vice Chair said, I, I would propose that in, um, while you know, while looking for um, a, a solution to the impasse between the association and uh, the, the, the Department of Health, we should conduct a committee in aid of legislation on how the uh, psoriasis program is being implemented because we have the oversight powers to check on implementation. And if it's going to be in aid of legislation, the, the legislation to resulting for that will be to ensure the budget for the program because we can have this law and if there's no budget provided by the executive branch and we, whenever we say we should increase the budget, we should increase, you know, the reality is increase the budget uh, at whose expense? What other, what other agency will lose the budget? So all this increase the budget, they really don't happen. There's any increase, but it all goes to DPWH. <laughs> so that those are the realities. So I I um I would like to make a motion, Mr. Chair, to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the psoriasis program with the with the legis understanding that the legislation is going to be the budgetary allocation. That is my we motion. second, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. Uh, so there's a motion by uh, Honorable Macapagal Arroyo that uh, we conduct uh, an inquiry in aid of legislation regarding the funding uh, and the utilization of the uh, research fund and other funds related to the psoriasis uh, program of the Department of Health before we can approve this bill uh, and uh, duly seconded. Hearing no objection. Any objection? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I no defer problem. to the wisdom of the committee and especially since uh, of our senior deputy speaker, Gloria Mahapagalaroy. So hearing no objection, the motion is approved. So... Um, if it, the, the inquiry and the legislation can work simultaneously naman. I mean, that's okay. Sure of the, that's the pleasure of the body, but but uh, I mean, uh, um, Mr. Chair, you're asking me if shall we approve the bill now? That's the pleasure of the body. I just am warning that we can approve the bill it will be a dead letter law unless our legislation will be incorporated into the next national budget. So, yes, Mr. Yes, Honorable, uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, and uh, with the indulgence of former president, senior deputy speaker, uh, the inquiry in, in the age of legislation can also work simultaneously in the legislative work that is needed for this bill. I think we've already heard sufficient um, comments and information that the Philippines, our country, could not bear the consequences of neglecting this problem. This will just get bigger and bigger if we do not find any solution. So if there are possible solutions that we could work simultaneously and harmonize it sometime in the future, then we could, uh, we could use that. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I do um, move that we uh, approve the two bills, 1106 and 4001, and we consolidate it subject to form and style. Um, so move, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. <laughs> yes, um, I would like to second the motion of Congressman Reyes, especially because I think as we have heard our um, civil, uh, civil society organizations and our private sector are doing so much about uh, this program. And I think the public sector uh, must at the very least equally 
uh, do the same. So I second, Mr. Chair. So there's a motion by Honorable uh, Reyes and duly seconded by uh, Honorable Garcia that uh, we consolidate and approve House Bill uh, 1106 and uh, House Bill 4001 uh, subject to style and amendment and in parallel with the uh, 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 inquiry uh, in aid of the legislation, legislation that we'll be conducting at a future date. Hearing no objection, uh, the motion is approved. Mr. Chair, uh, also when PhilHealth was, uh, sorry to interrupt, but when PhilHealth mentioned that they do wish to include this as part, I'm not so sure if I understood it right, but they intend to include it in the Consulta Plus program that will uh, be part of PhilHealth's uh, thrust to provide this through the universal health care law. Yeah, you could expect uh, this representation to work with PhilHealth and our civil society groups so that we could um, most immediately provide this to our um, constituents. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, noted, uh, Honorable Reyes. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Kingbo. Um, just a uh, small suggestion. If in case you find it productive um, to do the to exercise oversight over the psoriasis um, program, um, you may want to do it jointly with the committee on appropriations if um, funding is is the issue. Right. You would like to make the motion to include the committee on appropriations. So perhaps yes. um, I move to if there's such a thing to revise the earlier motion to. Um, to uh to conduct uh or to to exercise oversight jointly with the committee on appropriations so there's a motion to uh conduct an inquiry uh um Step jointly the with the committee on appropriation uh in aid of legislation the uh, psoriasis program of the department of health and duly seconded uh so uh hearing no objection the um, motion is approved um before we proceed to the next agenda Curious lang ako. Uh, may just ask the Department of Health or the experts here. Is psoriasis preventable? No, it isn't. It may be genetically um, um, related, but there are many who do not know if they have relatives like that. But it is triggered by environmental factors. Stress is number one. Because Infection, uh, etc. In the uh, bill, uh, Honorable uh, Mike Tan, the title here is uh, to prevent and treat. Yeah, I read that too. Uh, yes. Psoriasis. So I was wondering. It cannot be prevented, but it can be prevented from getting more severe. Yes. Because uh, of patient education, lifestyle change. But uh, psoriasis is a non preventable disease. It's an autoimmune yes. uh, disease, uh, but it is not a preventable, unlike uh, infectious disease and uh, the likes. But it's nice okay. if it's controlled. But you can control so possible. that it will not, uh, uh, worsen yes. and uh, and avoid complications. Yes, uh, of the, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Janet again, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, yes, Vice Chair Green. I, I believe the contention of the author here is prevention of complications. I was actually listening to some of the forum being conducted by the society and the experts. Uh, basically, it boils down to how the government can fund not only awareness, but equipping our general practitioners with the basic knowledge of diagnosing so that early diagnosis will redound to the community understanding, supporting the patient, especially those in stressful situation and preventing complications. So, uh, Attorney Mike Tan, the, your title means preventing complications. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Honorable Pancho. Uh, may I add, Mr. Chair, that uh, to DOH, I think it's about time that we create a an institution or national hospital to prevent and cure uh, psoriasis. Because with your record, ma'am, I think it's not accurate. Because for a patient, it's very hard to accept, admit, and of course, to reveal that I have it. So, napaka-hirap. 
Kasi ano yan eh, more on, it involves your physical appearance, ma'am. So it's very hard to say na you have it, ma'am. So alam mo naman ng Pilipino, uh, may konting tigawat lang yan, hirap na yan. May peklat yan, hirap na yan. So how much more if it's a case of uh, psoriasis, skin disease? And it's very expensive, man. If you go to a dermatologist, napaka-expensive po ng ating pong uh, paggagamutan. So I think it's about time na we consider, ma'am, that. And since you are here, ma'am, sa DOH, and of course, uh, we have a uh, representative, uh, ma'am Stella, maybe we can ask, makan ba talaga ma'am ang need ng DBM and the DOH, ma'am? So more or less, we have an idea, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Tan? Uh, Dr. Oy. Oy. Um. Yes. Ma'am, can I ask, uh, what do you mean? The Ma budget for a yes, program yes, 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 or yes, for yes. the hospital? For the program, ma'am. And then let's proceed to the hospital if we still have enough budget. <laughs> Uh, actually, for the program, if we compare to existing programs, uh, usually the budget is around 5 to 10 million, including the staff. Pero no commodities. But no commodities. What and do you mean by like commodities? For the Facil services like capacity building, advocacy. Like so, ma'am, if you will no, include all of that. Uh, including the commodities. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that we ha will have to ask... <laughs> Feel health or because at the moment there is still no standards of care for the treatment for psoriasis only in specialty hospitals. Kaya nga, so, the more na the, oh, oh. Yeah. Kumilos, kasi nga, it's a different disease, ma'am. Yes, actually, I understand, ma'am. I have a son who has psoriasis. Ah, so, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe so, we can uh, thoroughly thresh this out during the inquiry, uh, Honorable Pancho. Uh, so it's a non-preventable and it's a non-curable uh, psoriasis. Uh, am I correct, uh, Dr. Tan? So it's non-preventable and it's incurable. So what we are uh, after here is control and prevention of complications. Uh, yes. Okay. So thank you. So we now proceed with the, uh, the last agenda. The deliberation on bills amending Republic Act number 10767, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act. Um, we have three uh, bills on that. Uh, first is House Bill number 287, entitled An Act is Strengthening the National Program for the Elimination of Tuberculosis, amending for the purpose. Repu for the purpose of Republic Act number 10767 or the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act by uh, Honorable and Vice Chair uh, Keith Mike, Attorney Mike Tan. Uh, Attorney Mike Tan, uh, Mike Tan, you, are the, you have the floor. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Paulet. Uh, this proposal was approved on third and final reading during the previous Congress. Primarily, it seeks to fine tune or recalibrate the landmark TB law to make it more responsive in light of the country's commitment as signatory to the political declaration of the fight against tuberculosis, particularly in ensuring adequate social protection measures for the, our indigent TB patients through multi-sectoral approach with the engagement of other government agencies, the private sector, and other stakeholders. Accelerating efforts to improve access to rapid TB diagnostic tools, introducing new TB treatment regimens, Enhancing the logistics management system, adapting cutting-edge digital tools, and guaranteeing adequate and competent health human resources, among other commitments. Indeed, it is important to strengthen RA10767, considered as one of the most comprehensive laws on TB in the world. In order to enable the country to keep track of its commitment to develop a national strategic plan to find and treat over 2 million Filipinos with TB. Among the significant features of the bill are provisions on patients' rights and responsibilities, corporate social responsibility to encourage business corporations in contribute, to contribute in the ongoing efforts to reduce the incidence of TV in the country, convergence of TV of services to address 
the problem of indirect costs born out of accessing TB treatment, including transportation, accommodation, or halfway house and meals, among others. TB strategic plan for local government units, integration of TB services into established service delivery networks or local health referral system, and inclusion of TB dots treatment as one of the requirements for the conditional cash transfer program. In also included the provisions for personal complement, alternative financing schemes, and other sources of funds in order to ensure sufficient and sustainable financing for the country's commitment to end the TB epidemic by 2030. In view of the expediency of attaining the vision of a world free, free of TB, the immediate approval of this measure is earnestly sought. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, uh, Vice Chair Tan. Uh, we have two other similar bills. Uh, but, but before we proceed, we'd like to acknowledge uh, the presence on, on Zoom, uh, Honorable Baby Alain Vargas uh, Alfonso, Honorable Rodolfo Ompong Ordanes uh, from the Senior Citizens Party List, Honorable Wilter Palma, Deputy Majority Leader from the First District of Zamboanga, Sibugay, and uh, Vice Chair, uh, Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko from the Party List uh, BHW. Thank you very much. So we now tackle House Bill number 2036. Uh, by Honorable Representative, uh, Representative Christopher Son Kokoyap, but uh, since he's not around, we will uh, let uh, Honorable uh, Reyes uh, uh, sponsor in his behalf. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, on behalf of uh, Representative Christopher Son Kokoyap, I uh, wish to uh, submit his explanatory note as his sponsorship speech. Thank you. Um, Next is House Bill number 4179, an act is strengthening the national program for the elimination of tuberculosis, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 10767 or the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act by Representative Harris Christopher Ong Chuan, uh, but uh, he's also not around, so but, Honorable Yes, Ryan. Mr. Chair, likewise, uh, I wish to uh, submit the explanatory note of Representative Ong Chuan for House Bill 4179 as his uh, sponsorship speech. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Honorable Reyes. Uh, we now listen to uh, the Department of Health uh, resource person, Dr. Maria Rosario Silvia Uy. Dr. Uy. Good morning once again. Uh, the Department of Health supports the normal intent of the mentioned House bills, which seeks to amend and add new sections to Republic Act Number 10767 or the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act. Tuberculosis remains one of the most pressing public health issues, with the Philippines ranking fourth among 30 countries with a high burden in 2022. In 2021, there were 60,000 deaths in the country. Strengthening Republic Act 10767 will help address the need to find and treat all Filipinos with TB in line with the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals to end TB by 2030. The DOH recommends consolidation of the proposed House bills having similar provisions. Further, the DOH supports the following provisions. The DOH concourse with the transfer of authority from the Secretary of Health to the Chairperson of the Commission on Higher Education, Secretary of the Department of Education, and Director General of the Philippine Information Agency to lead in the implementation of education programs, basic education, and media campaign, respectively. The Secretary of Health will coordinate with each of the aforementioned agencies. We support the expansion of PhilHealth's benefit package for TB subject to health technology assessment process stipulated in UHC. We agree with the inclusion of the new section on TB patients' rights and responsibilities in the law. TB patients are faced with issues on gender rights, stigma, and discrimination, which hopefully can be addressed through this provision. 
As a major stakeholder, the DOH agrees to explicitly include the private sector. In this section, the private sector includes private corporations, CSOs, NGOs, and other groups or organizations, both local and international, to contribute to the ongoing efforts in reducing the incidence of TB by conducting TB prevention through promotion of healthy lifestyle, as well as early detection of TB cases. We recommend the inclusion of convergence of TB services, which is aligned with the health sector strategy that is anchored on the guiding principles of whole of government and whole of society approach. The DOH supports the provision of all private health facilities, which mandates to seek accreditation from PhilHealth as a TB DOTS provider. The DOH recognizes the importance of the community in TB elimination, thus their participation in this is crucial. We support the provision for exploring alternative financing schemes and suggest to include local governments aside from the Department of Finance and different agencies involved in health-related interventions. Further, the DOH supports the following provisions with some comments. There is no need to create a TB notification committee. Tuberculosis was recently included in the list of notifiable diseases under RA11332 or mandatory reporting of notifiable diseases and health events of the Public Health Concern Act. This mandates all facilities to report all notifiable diseases to the ep epidemiology and surveillance units. The DOH acknowledges the importance of TB registry and monitoring system for adult and childhood TB. Thus, currently, the Department of Health operates the Integrated Tuberculosis Information System, or ITIS. It is an electronic information system used to collect, consolidate, and report TB data from all health facilities managing TB cases. The DOH agrees with the provision on service delivery network and recommends to adopt the UHC term healthcare provider network in lieu of the term service delivery network. We support the provision to enable and support the beneficiaries of the conditional cash transfer program diagnosed with TB to start and complete treatment through the TB DOTS program. We strongly agree that the targeted approach for screening high-risk populations, persons living with HIV and TB contacts, is critical for early detection and prevention of TB. However, this provision can be found in the DOH health guidelines, which are updated on a regular basis based on new technologies and changes in international guidelines, hence may not need be included in the law. Based on the facts presented above, the DOH supports all the House bills mentioned with consideration of the upward mentioned recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, Dr. Uyu, you are support. in support, uh, subject to the recommendation yes. that uh, you are now. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, uh, we'd like to uh, acknowledge the presence of our Vice Chair, Honorable Ruth Mariano Hernandez from the 2nd District of Laguna. Uh, uh, from the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, Dr. Albert Domingo. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Mr. Chair. PhilHealth commends the authors of House Bill Numbers 287, 2036, and 4179 for their initiative to improve the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act, which we will refer to this discussion in this discussion as the TB Act. Nakita po ng pag-aaral nila Dr. Mary Ann Lansang at iba pa noong 2016 na mas marami pang Filipino ang may TB kumpara sa inakala natin. At kailangan po nating ayusin ang sistema kung paano natin sila nahahanap, nagagamot at naibabalik sa tamang antas ng pamumuhay. Layunin po ng PhilHealth na sagutin ang kaya nitong bayaran sa mga gastos ng ating kababayan na may TB upang mabawasan ang kanilang pasanin. RA11223, or the Universal Healthcare Act and its IRR, came into effect in 2019. Health services are now classified by law as either population-based or individual-based, with specific assignments as to who shall pay for what services and how these services are to be procured. 
From 2020 onwards, the COVID-19 pandemic taught our health system many lessons, one of which includes the importance of well-governed province and city-wide health systems, as well as integrated healthcare provider networks or HCPNs. We were also reminded of the strategic value of private sector participation, and we recognize that the UHC Act already allows for the strategic contracting of this untapped force multiplier for efficient and equitable health service delivery. It is in the above context, Mr. Chair, that PhilHealth submits these observations and recommendations for the committee's kind consideration. We respectfully submit that any and all amendments to the TB Act should not disturb fundamental reforms already instituted by the Universal Healthcare Act, which was authored by no less than Dr. Helen Tan in the previous Congress, in addition to those installed by the National Health Insurance Act, so as to not impede the implementation effort already underway after being jump-started by the pandemic response. For example, Mr. Chair, the House bills proposed to have a new Section 18 to define a service delivery network with an explicit mandate to integrate and strengthen the provision of TB services. Mr. Chair, the UHC Act, Section 4L, already has a legal definition for a healthcare provider network. Baka hindi na po natin kailangan magkaroon ng separate definition for SDN. The House bills proposed to have a new Section 26 on alternative financing schemes. Reference is made to the DOH entering into contracts with private hospitals or health facilities under PPP approaches. We respectfully submit that this is no longer the approach preferred by law. Dun po sa inakda ni Congresswoman, former Congresswoman, now Governor Dr. Helen Tan, it is more nuanced. The DOH shall endeavor to contract province-wide and city-wide health systems for the delivery of population-based health services, and PhilHealth shall contract public, private, or mixed healthcare provider networks for the delivery of individual-based health services. Binigyan din po ng kapangyarihan ng PhilHealth na mag-contract ng Apex or End Referral Hospitals as standalone healthcare providers. Hindi na po natin kailangan dumaan sa baka mas mahaba pa yung proseso na PPP with the DOF. It may be prudent to not disturb the carefully debated and enshrined health system reforms in the UHC Act that are already underway. The amendment to the TB Act may refer to them instead, and PhilHealth is ready to work with the committee for specific language on how to do so. The House bills propose to have a new Section 22 that mandates all private health facilities to seek accreditation from PhilHealth as a TB DOTS provider. We seek the committee's kind indulgence in studying this mandate further before deciding to adopt it. The World Health Organization in 2022 noted that mandatory accreditation programs may risk skewing perceptions towards achieving an outcome rather than continuous quality improvement if accredited organizations see the process as a regulatory requirement, as opposed to a supportive, iterative, holistic, inclusive, and continuous process to improve quality outcomes and organizational systems. Siguro, Mr. Chair, i-translate ko lang yung medyo mahaba po na quotation from the WHO guidance. Ang ano po kasi accreditation, continuous process po siya. Kapag nakita po siya bilang isang mandatory requirement sa isang batas, baka ang tingnan po ng private provider ay parang lisensya yan. Pag na-achieve na nila, na-check na nila, hindi na sila magkakaroon ng quality improvement. But again, it deserves further study. Again, also, pursuant to the UHC Act, PhilHealth is about to implement Consulta Plus, the Comprehensive Outpatient Benefit Package. We surmise that properly designed benefits and capitation rates that are fairly set could entice more private healthcare providers to undergo continuous quality improvement through a voluntary accreditation process. We thank the House of Representatives for prioritizing these key measures on tuberculosis and for the opportunity to be heard. We submit, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Dr. Domingo. Uh, next is uh, Mr. Uh, Yuri Castro from, from the Commission on Higher Education. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, my apologies that I have no access to video camera computer. So good morning for Honorable Chair of this committee and respected legislators present and fellow Lincoln Bayan and team resource persons. I am, I am Yuri M. Castro of Chaired Office of Student Development and Services. And for Chad, we will submit our official position paper and specific comments and recommendations for consideration of the committee as soon as, the cha as our chair, Devera, signs the document. But we uh, strongly support the intention and passage into law of this legislative issue. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Castro. 
uh, from the Department of Education, Dr. Lily Beth uh, Gonzalez. Dr. Gonzalez. My uh, good morning, Honorable Chair and Honorable Vice Chair, Attorney Mike Tan, and to the distinguished members of the Committee on Health. The Department of Education um, fully supports the proposed changes to strengthen the Comprehensive Tuberculosis Elimination Plan Act as a highly communicable disease that remains prevalent in the country. Tuberculosis continues to pose a challenge to public health and the national health system. As health experts have pointed out, TB is curable, but effective measures to combat its spreads can only come from a proper understanding of the reasons for TB's persistence in the country. This disease is particularly prevalent in urban poor areas and goes hand in hand with poverty, which cause lack of access to healthcare, congested living conditions, and lack of information on TB prevention and management. This, is, this situation is further aggravated by inadequate funding of the National Anti-TB Program. Cognizance to its role in the national effort to eradicate TB in the Philippines, the DepEd has been implementing its own anti-TB program in close coordination with the Department of Health for teaching and non-teaching DepEd personnel for many years now. This program includes TB screening during the annual medical checkup. This is complemented by DepEd's comprehensive tobacco control policy, which prohibits smoking among learners and establishes school premises and DepEd offices as smoke-free zones. Requiring the DepEd in Section 2 of the pertinent House Bill to include modules in the basic education curriculum on the principles and practices of preventing, detecting, managing, and controlling TB with further deepened its involvement in the information advocacy aspect of the anti-TB program. The DepEd also logs the inclusion of new provision on the convergence of TB services found in Section 9 of the same House Bill, where the department, along with other agencies, is mandated to develop a comprehensive program of support services for TB patients and their affected children and families. This will further deepen the department's own efforts to combat the spread of TB among DepEd teaching and non-teaching personnel, as well as learners, and help ease their burden. Other provisions in the proposed amendment of the existing law, such as the sustained media campaign, the Phil Health TB package, and the creation of tuberculosis notification committee and the TB registry and monitoring system will all contribute to achieve the country's goal of eradicating tuberculosis. All of this must be accompanied with adequate funding if the government is to make it significant in the fight to control the spread of the disease. It is, this is consistent with the DepEd's mandate to educate learners, also teach them compassion among others, and a deep sense of social responsibility and positive values. And then for us to produce um, generations of citizens and good Filipino leaders. Thank you. Thank you, Deped. Um, up next is uh, Ms. Josephine Babaran from Philippine Information Agency. Um, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, PIA also commends the initiative of our lawmakers to amend, strengthen RA 10767 or the Comprehensive TB Elimination Act with regards to the House bill House bills under Section 10 that concern the Philippine Information Agency, or PIA, on behalf of PIA Director General Ramon Kualuping. We propose, recommend to adopt 
and retain the provision under Section 10 of RA Number 10767, Series of 2016, which originally stated as Section 10 Media Campaign, the Secretary of Health in coordination with the Philippine Information Agency, PIA, shall encourage local media outlets to launch a media campaign on TB control, treatment, and management using all forms of multimedia and other electronic means of communication. PIA, as mandated by the law, will provide communication support to all government programs through its regional and, and provincial information centers nationwide. PIA commits to provide full support to help DOH to promote TB control, treatment, and management using all forms of multimedia and other electronic means of communication. With this, the PIA, Mr. Chair, support supports the proposed amendment through these House bills subject to the PIA recommendation to adopt and retain the original provision stated under Section 10, Media Campaign of RA Number 10767, Series of 2016. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, from the uh, TESDA, Attorney Clifford uh, Pascual. Attorney Pascual. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. TESDA submits its concurrence to the proposed amendment to uh, Republic Act Number 10767, specifically the provision affecting the authority, Mr. Chair, which is cited in Section 9 of this bill, uh, leading the agency to implement a non-discriminatory approach in dealing with clients suffering from tuberculosis and to incorporate TB awareness in the training program of technical vocational education institutions through the conduct of relevant seminars for all its students. Nevertheless, uh, Mr. Chair, may we seek clarification as to uh, Section 9, Paragraph 5, when it made mention of uh, focus groups. Must TESDA have a licensed medical professional to meet the requirements of this uh, provision, Mr. Chair, considering that TESDA has a very limited me medical personnel? Towards this end, however, Mr. Chair, please be assured of TESDA's full support of these legislative endeavors one, once enacted into law. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney Pascual. Um, yes, sir. From the Department of Labor and Employment, uh, Dr. Marco Antonio Valeros. Uh, hello, po. Uh, good morning, Honorable uh, 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 Mr. Chair. and the rest of uh, please proceed the workplace component of the said uh, house bills are in harmony with the dolls department order 7305 guidelines for the implementation of policy and program on TV prevention and control in the workplace where all establishments workplaces and work sites in the private sector are mandated to formulate and implement TB prevention and control policy and program. The said BO requires the private sector to develop their own workplace program on TB in accordance with the national laws and policies, prevention, strategies to advocacy, education, and training. Not only fully supports the provision for right to gainful and productive employment, without discrimination, reasonable working conditions, and work integration after recovery in the proposed measures. The participation of the private sector in the country's TV program as part of the corporate, corporate social responsibility is also highly encouraged in the proposed law. This shall help synergize the country's efforts in its fight against TV. In sum, the department supports the objectives and purpose of the proposed measures we interpose no objections to its enactment into a law. And that's all your honor. Thank you, Attorney Valeros. Um, at this point, we'd like to uh, call uh, Honorable uh, Garcia. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning po sa lahat. Uh, ngayon pa lang po, gusto ko na pong mag-motion um, for the approval and the uh, uh, for us to be co-authors of this very laudable um, bill. Um, nung mayor po ako ng nine years, um, malaki pong uh, challenge po talaga sa LGU, ang TB um, 
diagnostics, uh, prevention, uh, control, and elimination. And uh, from the regional, national, regional, provincial, municipal up to the barangay, talaga pong kailangan ng convergence of efforts, especially our BHWs. And of course, yung ating private partners um, like a PBSP na talagang napakalaki po ng tulong sa amin at saka po ng USAID TV platform. So, um, in consultation with them uh, and with uh, the indulgence of our authors, meron lang po kaming um, konting comments from a resource, resource person's uh, point of view po, kung pwede. And uh, I would also like to acknowledge, Mr. Chair, online din po ang ating USAID uh, TB platform, Chief of Party, si Dr. Marian Kalnan at si Dr. Rodora Cruz. Um, Doon po sa Section 4, Section 12-A, katulad po sa DOH, uh, we think na yung TB Notification Committee may not be so feasible for all LGUs. So katulad po ng DOH, baka po pwede po siyang uh, nakasama naman or isama dun sa TB uh, notifiable diseases, uh, sa notif DOH notifiable diseases reporting mechanism. Yung section 6, section 14 rin po, similar to I think the, the comment of DOH, dun po sa line na every public and private health center shall establish and maintain their own internal TB registry May we propose to use a unified TB registry, for instance nga po yung ITIS, um, which, with unique identifiers to enable referral and follow-up of patients across sites and geographical regions kasi minsan palipat-lipat po sila. Um, section 9, Section 17, very similar with DOH comment. Uh, we really strongly suggest to consider the inclusion of private sector enhancing their own workplace programs for TB education, prevention, care, and treatment rather than just prevention. Kasi po the private sector employs a sizable proportion of the population and can serve as first point of contact not only for TB prevention but for early detection through robust workplace programs. This can be enforced through occupational safety programs within the organization. Um, section 9, Section 17, let's consider TESDA as a vehicle to implement stigma reduction and mitigation efforts through education and training institutions. Section 9, Section 17, uh, may we consider social protection programs rather than comprehensive program of support services for TB victims, uh, their affected children and families. Kasi po yung social protection programs are encompassing and more sustainable than traditional support services for TB. Um, section 9, Section 17, we suggest to replace the word TB victim with persons affected by TB. Um, section 10, Section 18, um, I don't know if I mentioned Pony DOH, uh, we should consider healthcare provider networks or HCPN in keeping with the UHC reforms rather than SDN. Um, section 13, Section 21, um, we suggest integration of TB screening diagnosis care and treatment in HIV. These are clearly defined in WHO TB HIV collaborative uh, framework. Sex, uh, and then also, in uh, because we have the Word Matter TB Language Guide, uh, Words Matter TB Language Guide, uh, we prefer to use TB prevention diagnose, diagnosis, care and treatment rather than just TB control. Section 17, Section 25, uh, may we consider population-based mobilization rather than key affected populations. Uh, this is due to TB incidents now in the country is currently estimated at 650 of, uh, per 100,000, making it already, making it an epidemic. And then... Um, May we also consider including an amendment on using UHC reforms 
to achieve TB elimination, specifically improving access to TB prevention, diagnosis, care, and treatment using healthcare provider networks with strengthened primary health care and across the life course, and preventing catastrophic costs through national health insurance and other health financing and social protection models. Uh, yun lang po, Mr. Chair, if uh, our authors would uh, kindly reconsider. Thank you, Pa. Thank you, Honorable Garcia. Uh, Honorable Mike Tan? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, we subscribe to the amendments proposed by the research persons and our representative from uh, Bataan, Maria Angela Garcia. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, next is Honorable uh, Kimbo. Yes, um, salamat, Mr. Chair. Before I go to my um, questions on specific uh, selected provisions, um, I just have a general question. Bakit hanggang ngayon, public health problem pa rin ang TB? So, kanina merong banggit na it's usually um, a problem in urban poor areas. It's a problem really of lack of access to care. But um, on the basis of studies that I did myself in the early 2000s, um, ang pas sa pagkakaalam ko, madali naman i-treat ang TB. As long as ma-diagnose ka, madali. All you need to do is complete the medication for, I believe, six months, right? Pagkatapos nun, more or less, okay ka na. Um, at that time, ang naging approach, I believe hanggang ngayon, is to have a TB treatment partner, right? So, nakalipas na ang two decades. I believe I did that in 2004. Hanggang ngayon, nandun pa rin. So, question is, yung TB treatment ba? TB treatment partner? Hindi pa naging effective yung intervention na yun? And then naalala ko rin na isang balakid is um, requirement kasi na ang ginagamit is sputum tests. And I think na meron mga aversion to um, undergoing a sputum exam. So nagiging balakid yun. Hanggang ngayon ba ganun pa rin ba ang uh, behavior ng ating uh, TB patients? And the uh, third, I think um, nagkakaproblema sa registry. Meaning um, pagdating sa case finding, whether passive or active, um, hindi nagiging kompleto ang uh, pag-include uh, ng mga pasyente sa TB registry and therefore, nahihirapan tayo mag-monitor. So, yun yung siguro first set of questions. Hanggang ngayon ba, ganun pa rin ang sitwasyon and therefore, public health issue pa rin siya up to today. Uh, DOH? Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Uy? Mr. Chair, can I refer you to Dr. Alan Pabella? Dr. Uh, Alan Pabella? Yeah. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for the questions. Uh, so the main question is uh, why TB remains as a public health problem. Uh, right now, we recognize that uh, TB is not really just a medical problem, but uh, it's highly dependent on social determinants of health. Uh, when the prevalence survey was done in 2017, uh, many were surprised that the prevalence was almost the same as 2007. Kasi before po noon, yung 1997 to 2007, bumaba na eh. Pero 2007 to 2017, it remained uh, the same. And so there was really a lot of discussions and we were assisted even by WHO. And one finding really was, uh, it's not just the medical aspects such as diagnostics and treatment, but really the social determinants of health, like socioeconomic situation of patients that affect compliance, uh, some of them are not able to fully complete the six months because they have to transfer work. Uh, and also there are other factors like nutritional status, which may affect treatment uh, outcome. Even if uminom ng gamot, kung malnourished, they may not get cured. Uh, so that's why uh, I think even in the proposed bill, there's really uh, emphasis on social support. And that's also what the DOH is also going towards uh, in terms of engaging multiple sectors to address the problem, not just the Department of Health. Uh, and then yung specifics, uh, kakrasuma ng question mo, uh, we still do. Unfortunately, it's still the standard of care, yung sputum test. Uh, so the compliance varies. Uh, we noted that in the private sector, there's less compliance uh, because maybe they prefer to use X-ray. But in terms of standards of care internationally, the sputum test using what we call the rapid diagnostic test is still the standard. Ayung uh, tutok gamutan, doctora. We have sort of shifted 
uh, differently no kasi tutok gamutan naman tayo 2007 to 2017 eh pero yun nga hindi ganoon kalaki impact actually now we are may, may paradigm shift doon we're now what we call patient centered care uh, hindi mo naman kailangang inumin yung gamot sa harap ng healthcare worker as long as you have a patient uh, supporter which can be a family member na rin so uh, in a way po tutok gamutan pa rin because there's a patient supporter uh, pero not strictly the patient having to go daily to the to the health facility so yun pa uh, your honor yes mr chair kaya ako to tinanong is that's precisely why we want to amend the existing law meron ba na gaps meron gaps ba ang existing law na talagang um, prevents us from actually eliminating tv so sinasabi mo um wala naman problema sa ating medical interventions, right? Tama ba yun? Um, but number two, kailangan, kailangan lang dagdagan ng uh, um, increased interventions with respect to nutrition. Obviously, pagdating sa poverty, etc., it's beyond the DOH, right? Pero the things that are within the control of the DOH would include um, patient support as well as um, additional nutritional interventions. But to validate, this sputum test, is that a requirement to avail of medical interventions? Kasi baka yun na nagiging issue, di ba? So kung merong aversion to um, having a sputum test, pero nakatali doon ang uh, pag-avail ng medicine, hindi siya nakaka-avail ng medicine na libre. Uh, so it's highly recommended because it's the most accurate test. However... Uh, it is not a prerequisite to be enrolled in the TB program because we have what we call clinically diagnosed cases uh, which are either sputum negative or did not submit sputum. And the most common example of that are the children. Many of them are unable to submit sputum. Uh, they are what we call diagnosed clinically and also enrolled into the program. Oh, all right. Okay, thank you. So let oh, me now... Uh, yes. Si follow up ka lang, uh, Honorable Kimbo. Hmm. So what you are using now is uh, sputum and or uh, chest x-ray or yeah. it depends on the age? Yeah. Uh, so the recommendation uh, is really the primary test is sputum. So For as long as the adults. Uh, regardless of age, if, the, if they can course, expect uh, to rate. bata, hindi mo naman ma-sputum yeah. yan kung yeah. two years old or three yeah, years yeah. old. Definitely, Doc. Oh. Definitely, so, by your honor. And then, uh, what we call secondary diagnostic test, if the patient is unable to submit sputum, uh, secondary diagnostic test, you can rely on the X-ray. Uh, ang difference lang po, uh, definitely mas accurate ang sputum. So, pag nag-positive doon, definite or halos sigurado ka ng TB yun. Uh, for X-ray, uh, we call it sometimes po false positive diagnosis. No, mm. sometimes you may treat a patient based on a positive X-ray. Uh, yung pala hindi pala siya TB talaga. So, so yun po yung in, difference. In on the ground, ang nangyayare X-ray pa rin ng mas marami. Uh, actually po sputum. Yeah, in the public health facilities, our rural health units and health centers, uh, for adults almost more than 90% of them are able to undergo sputum tests in okay. the public sector. Uh, however, in the private sector, uh, majority is still diagnosed by X-ray. Ang main reason, uh, yung okay. ating RDT, rapid diagnostic test, uh -huh. uh, mostly available in the government centers. And sometimes there's a preference of patients to remain in private facilities and not to be referred to the public facilities. And all those diagnosed with the TB, nakakakuha sila ng libreng gamot from the Department of Health? If they are referred to the health center or RHU, yes, they are eligible. As for long the as they medicines. have either the PT, uh, the chest X-ray or the sputum, or do you require sputum? Kasi yeah. ang, ang experience ko sa DOH, they require a sputum yeah. Bago sila magbibigay ng gamot, they don't they don't rely on the chest X-ray. Uh, yes, Your Honor. So, Pag pupunta ang mga pasyente ko sa RHU, uh, meron ng chest X-ray, nire-require yeah. pa rin silang magpasputum test para makakuha ng libreng gamot. Uh, so is so, that uh, so what's uh, being done now? Uh, actually, Your Honor, the, the patient who is referred by the private with an X-ray uh, a sputum is still requested by yes. the public health center. Uh, pero in terms of policy, we are very clear if the patient can submit the sputum. And you know... Pero if they cannot submit the sputum, 
they can diagnose clinically pa. At alam naman natin, ang sputum exam, ano ba ang yield ng sputum uh, test? How yeah. many percent ang yield? Yeah. Di ba mababa? Yeah. Uh, well, approximately dun sa mga presumptive TB, approximately 20 to 25 percent uh, will okay. test positive on the sputum. Now, yung remaining 75 percent po, uh, based on studies, uh, we estimate majority of them may not be active TB. Do you do you uh, consider clinical diagnosis? I mean, obviously, na tibing TB na. I mean, for doctors, yeah. uh, sometimes yeah. kita mo na sa X-ray. You don't need to be a pulmonologist or a radiologist to diagnose. Uh, no, ayon yun pa rin recognize yeah. Actually, Kailangan we, pa rin hintayin yeah. yung sputum na twenty percent lang ang 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 yield para makakuha ng libreng gamot. Uh, actually, we we recognize the clinical diagnosis. Pa. So if the patient has been clinically diagnosed, uh, patient is already eligible for treatment. Uh, pero in terms of standard of care, po kasi, there is also an implication if you are sputum positive or not uh, for the care of the patient. Uh, particularly, po, we have what we call sputum follow-up exam, uh, wherein during your treatment, uh, there is a repeat test on the second, fourth, and sixth months. How many times months. ang pinababalik-balik nyo? Uh, para, kasi kuminsan, ah, yeah. negative. O balik kayo. Uh, magpapasputum ka, baka hindi nyo nakolekta ng tama. So, babalik na naman ang pasyente. Yeah. Yung iba, ayaw na nilang bumalik. Yeah. Uh, hindi na sila babalik. Ma maiinis na sila. Malayo, madami pang ginagawa. So, these are the gaps that you should yeah. address. The diagnosis, the basis... Uh, for diagnosis and then the basis for giving the the medicines na libre. Kasi siyempre umaasa sila sa libre ng gamot. At kahit libre na, uh, if I may answer the question of uh, Honorable Kimbo, one of the reasons kung bakit uh, nag-fail yung treatment natin sa TB, ang hirap kumbinsihin ng pasyente na walang nararamdaman at painumin mo siya ng minimum of six months. Uh, sometimes one year yun eh. Ang hirap. Wala silang nararamdaman kahit libre na. Uh, kahit meron kang sinasabi niyo, mayroon patient support uh, or family member support. Kung tata yung pasyente tapos yung high school yung anak niya, hindi niya ma mautusan ng tatay niya na inumin niya araw-araw. Uh, especially... You know, the initial three months ng treatment ng TB with rifampicin, matatakot yung kulay sa ihi. Orange ang kulay nun. So yung iba, matatakot sila, natatakot sila sa, dun sa ano na na. Especially kung wala nang nararamdaman. Usually after one month or two months, okay na sila na wala na sila ng hemoptysis or yung cough. Ang hirap. Eh. So yun ang siguro isa sa mga factors. No? Ah, I'm sorry, ah. Uh, Please proceed, the Honorable King. No, Napaka-swerte ng committee natin na ang chairman mm -hmm. ay isang napaka-husay na manggagamot, <laughs> Dr. Gato. Um, but um, if I may chair on section, I think that's why important in section um, 15, which um, says that screening by chest x-ray shall be initiated among all contacts of an index case with bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed pulmonary TB, etc. So, important yung word na or. Um, therefore, I believe um, hindi madisenfranchise ang isang pasyente kung hindi siya nakapag-sputum for whatever reason. So, that's one. Number two, maganda talaga yung sinabi ni uh, Chair Gato na Kasi mabilis kang maging asymptomatic as, as long as you take the meds in a few weeks asymptomatic or days even asymptomatic ka na kaagad. Meanwhile, paano yung the rest of the five months or even 11 months, right? So tingin ko, doon papasok yung importance ng TB registry, right? So anyway, meron naman language on that. Pwede natin puntahan later on. But we need to have a mechanism by which perhaps na de deploy natin ang BHWs para magkaroon ng monitoring, para makapag-check uh, kung talagang napapagpatuloy ang, uh, ang uh, pag-take ng drugs. So I think baka doon kulang. Um, and uh, looking at the provisions, 
parang there's no um there's no language that will um directly address that concern. So baka anyway, sir. Mr. Chair. And and if I may add, ito yung once na hindi na nila tinuloy o na hindi nila na complete MDR. yung treatment. Dito na pumapasok yung MDR. resistance. Yes. Yung multi-drug resistance yes, so, or super resistant na. Correct. And yan so, ang mas mabigat na problema. Uh, oh, so ang yes, magandang so. tanong yan na next is, tumataas ba ang MDR-TB cases natin? Because if the answer is yes, eh klarong-klaro, ang dahilan yan as, is because hindi na itat, natatapos ang uh, treatment regime. Kaya yun ang dapat directly natin ma-address dito sa panukala. Mr. Chair? Up. Ano lang, follow up lang po kung pwede kay Kong Stella before po sumagot po si Dr. Yes, Aaron. Okay lang po, Kong. Oh. Um, nung nagkaroon po ng COVID-19, uh, the entire nation uh, nakafocus sa COVID-19. And isa po sa practice na ginawa po natin sa COVID-19 that went down up to the barangays was the contact tracing. And when I was mayor, ito po yung nakita po namin na ganun din po ka-focused and ka -de ka detalyado to answer po yung tanong ni Kong Stella kung ba't hanggang ngayon may, may TB pa, yung contact tracing natin. Of course, one is to, de to, to be able to um, uh, test and spot immediately those who are uh, uh, TB patients and do all the contact, I mean, aside from gamutin sila, do all the contact tracings kasi si TB, like COVID, is nakakahawa. Unlike COVID, meron siyang gamot. So, kaya siguro, aside from yung mga defaulters natin, kaya rin siguro dumadami at saka hindi po na, na co-contain at nasa stop, na-eliminate. Na kasi kulang, baka hindi po yung exerted efforts natin dun sa contact tracing kulang. Kasi kapag po, may, number one, talagang katulad ng COVID, kailangan po talaga total uh, approach in terms of uh, prevention, in terms of diagnosis, in terms of treatment. Second is yung contact tracing na kung sino yung family members niya, work-related uh, uh, work, uh, um, um, exposures niya, etc. Talaga pong dapat ma-contact trace para malaman po natin kung nahawa na rin. Kasi exponent, katulad po ng COVID, exponential po yung paghawa. So I think yung learning po natin sa COVID-19, sinasabi nga po ni Kong Stella yung mechanism up to the barangay level. If we are able to do that, uh, na all of us are really yung hindi lang isang tabi yung, yung TB pero talagang kung paano tayo the whole nation, the whole world nagtuon ng pansin sa COVID-19 kung ganun din tayo sa TB hopefully because there's a cure um, hopefully po uh, by 2030 we all eliminate TB na po as per our SDG so yun lang po yung from um, local point of view approach on COVID-19, isa pong magandang practice siguro. And talagang lahat nagtulong-tulong. Right. Salamat, uh, Kong Angela. Very useful inputs. Baka pwede natin tugunan yan later on when we look at certain provisions. But for now, tanong lang, no, tumaas nga ba ang MDR-TB cases? Uh, yes, Sir Honor. Uh, unfortunately, tumaas po. Uh, in the drug resistance survey between 2010 to 2018, uh, although 2018 yung last, uh, yung prevalence ng drug resistant among new TB cases uh, increased slightly from 1.6 to 2%. Uh, although 0.4 lang po yun, pero in terms of sa public health, ano, malaking change din po yun. So again, yes. So note natin yun. Therefore, talagang importante na magkaroon ng uh, close monitoring at the barangay level. And babalikan natin yun later on. So let me go to my first question. Sorry, yeah. um, sa title muna tayo an act strengthening the national program. So tamang understanding natin na hindi siya devolved, no? Tama po? Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, it is a national program. Uh, however, since we are in a devolved health system, the implementation of the, the services are through the local governments. Uh, pero, uh, just to be clear, uh, the DOH continues to support uh, in the devolution transition plan 
of 2022 to 2024, uh, the DOH continues to support 100% of diagnostic laboratory commodities and uh, drugs for TB. So as far as yung DOH po, uh, nationally procured pa rin po yung major commodities required. Kung sa yes, yes, lang ako, first. Chair. Kasama po ba sa kayang pondohan ng DOH for the LGUs? Kami po kasi we were very uh, fortunate na si PBSP at si USAID ka-partner po namin. Yung mga true nat uh, testing um, at saka po yung gene expert at saka po yung importante rin kasi yung x-ray um, through USAID na bigyan yung probinsya po nung ultra portable x-ray na after a few minutes kita mo na agad and na iikot po talaga sa lahat ng mga community. So palagay ko kung mabibigyan din po natin yan, yung mga LGUs uh, mas malaking tulong po sa sa diagnostics. Uh, Dr. Fadelia. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so yes po, for now po, DOH is procuring the expert cartridges for diagnostics. Uh, as to the X-ray with, I think you're talking about yung X-ray with artificial intelligence where there is an automatic reading, uh, including yung TrueNAT, which is a relatively new introduction. Uh, this will still have to undergo health technology assessment. Uh, but we have submitted it already, nominated it as uh, HTA topics. So, Mr. Jer, yes. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Honorable Kimbo. So kasi sinabi ni Doc uh, Alan na ang implementation ay nasa LGU. So dapat kailangan maliwanag kung anong ibig sabihin ng implementation na yan. Um, so as you said, uh, you, the DOH shall provide um, diagnostics, so the cartridges, um, lab tests, tama ba? Um, and meds. So, but in the case of equipment, kasama din. So, so, okay, my point being, dapat klaro kung ano ang sa inyo at kung saan nag-umpisa ang responsibilidad ng LGU. Kasi sa ngayon, doon nagkakaroon ng confusion eh. Tapos meron language dito on LGU planning, etc., etc. Hindi ngayon nagiging clear. O pagdating sa TB registry, pagdating sa monitoring, kanino yun? Diba? So meron ba clarity that you can provide to us now? Meaning if you look at the things to do from start to end para matapos ang treatment ng isang pasyente, ano ang toka ng DOH? Ano ang toka ng LGU? Uh, Ma'am, Right now, the DOH is only in charge of the commodities po. The equipment, hindi pa po. Uh, ang nagsusupply po ng equipment ngayon are usually global funds and angels. So, naging maliwanag. Ito, medicine <laughs> lang, Jer. Eh, paano naman naging national program itong TV program? Eh, napakaliit naman na component na yun kumpara sa ibang pangangailangan natin para tuluyan ng matuldukan itong TB. Eh kaya naman pala patuloy na mataas pa rin ang prevalence ng TB. Kasi kailangan natin seryosohin talaga to. Dr. Fabelia? Uh, so, actually for the equipment, the gene expert, uh, we do recognize we still have a gap in the number of machines that the country needs. Uh, th th there was uh, a investment back in 2018 na nag-procure din yung DOH because currently, Your Honor, we have around 860 gene expert laboratories nationwide. Uh, but most of it, uh, as Doc Silvia mentioned, was uh, through donor uh, procurement yung Global Fund. Uh, I believe only around 300 of that is procured by DOH back in 2019 or 2020. Uh, so we'll we'll get back to you, but we recognize uh, your point, uh, Your Honor, that uh, we need to be clear about yung capital expenditure or e equipment it's support. Capex, but everything yeah. else, as I said, from start to end. Yeah. Diba? Yeah. Anong toka nyo? Anong toka ng LGU? Yeah. So number two, uh, in relation to that, magkano bang budget yeah. ng national TV program? Yeah. Um, or more importantly, magkano ba ang costing per TB patient? Yeah. Meron kayong cost so, of care, di ba? Yeah. 
So, so how much is that? Based on the CPGs, ano ang costing natin? Yeah. So to add lang, Doctor, uh, to add lang, Your Honor, uh, for for the commodities lang, uh, we just like to also cite that we have a DOH Administrative Order 2022-010, uh, yung implementation of TBHIV integration in UHC, uh, that actually delineates uh, what commodities will be procured by DOH versus what commodities will be procured by the LGU. Uh, currently, ang nasa LGU doon is mainly on the supply for microscopy, laboratory, yung commodities na yun, uh, as well as x-ray and okay. PPD. Sige, so, doon sa opera. Recommend mo na. Ano yeah. ang costing kada TB patient? From start to end, yeah. Yeah. Ah, at hindi lang medicine. Kasi as alam natin kailangan magpa-diagnose. Yeah. Diba? May mga indirect costs, etc. Mr. Chair. Uh, Janet uh, Garin, Mr. Vice Chair. Chair Garin. Yeah. Mr. Chair, if the Honorable Stella Kimbo will be amenable, can I make a quick interjection? Um, yes. Uh, please proceed, uh, Vice Chair Garin. Yeah. yeah, earlier kasi Mr. Chair narinig ko na gamot lang daw ang binibili ng Department of Health and hindi raw yung mga machines, no? um, uh, it's all coming from donors. Well, I do agree that um, some of the um, machines came from, a few, uh, from the global front, no? from the donors. I remember fully during my time that there was a proposal and we allocated funds for these equipments for 2015, 16, 17. Um, uh, I am very sure of that kasi ako po yung ano, nag-approve ng funding allocation and I defended it before DBM. Um, uh, however, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi ko alam bakit nawala kasi may target yon na to assist LGUs, especially yung mga walang kaya, eh, DOH will provide. Uh, but tama po si Kong Stella, Mr. Chair, dapat talaga tuloy-tuloy yung programa. But we also have to look into the prices because the cartridges apparently are very expensive at hindi nagbababa ng presyo. And I'm not sure if there is a monopoly. So I believe that's also one thing that um, the Congress can look into, especially that we have here the Senior Vice Chair of the Committee on Appropriations. If we can look into the procurement of the gene expert cartridges and look at the pricing. Kasi mukhang isa lang yung supplier at medyo hindi nagbababa ng presyo, napakamahal, at uh, pinapayagan naman ng the Department of Health. Because what should be done is that if there is only one supplier, the ABC should be adjusted. Ang nangyayari po kasi, pag in-adjust mo yung ABC, at alam mo namang hindi lugi ang supplier, they will still bid. But what happens is, um, sometimes there are occasions that they dictate the ABC. Um, as far as I can remember, medyo napaka mahal po nung cartridges and equipment. And let's verify if uh, the Honorable Stella Kimbo will be very much willing. Let's verify kasi mukhang sole supplier yan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Thank Chair, you, uh, Vice Chair Garin. Uh, Kaswerte din natin na meron tayong member na former Secretary ng uh, DOH. Uh, maganda naman ang uh, observations ni uh, former Sec Garin. And uh, ako, I agree that uh, on the part of the Committee on Appropriations, uh, we should be able to exercise oversight um, on that issue. At uh, inaasahan natin na tutulungan po tayo ni uh, Kong Janet on this uh, issue. But going back to my um, uh, question, Ano yung costing? Yeah. Uh, so, Your Honor, the, the costing of TB services done in 2021 uh, ranged from 6,800 to 18,000. So, there were low, middle, and high scenarios pa. Using per patient. The per patient pa. Okay, so, so 18,000 is MDR na yun, right? Uh, I, this is for, for adult drug-susceptible TB lang pa. There's and a separate costing. Page? Wala pa dito yung MDR. Yeah, separate po siya. Okay, so for, for DRTB po, it's 88,000 to 370,000 per patient. Okay. Napakalaki yes, ng variation pa rin. Yes, um, hindi ko alam kung bakit. Uh, uh, dapat ang costing mo dyan. 
it's almost times three yeah. yung uh, comparison of yeah. maximum and the minimum. Yeah. So it's a very wide range, which means when the range is very wide, um, obviously the margin of error is going to be high as well. Yeah. So uh, I, I think you need to reassess your, your costing. And then if you look at the midpoint, maybe um, say you look at maybe 9,000 per head, um, and then based on the estimated number of cases, what is yung budget requirement? So if you multiply, what's the estimated number of cases per year? And you multiply that by, para madali, 10,000 pesos. So annually, we're targeting uh, 400 to 450,000 per year. Um, patients. Yes. So if you say, um, so you're looking at 4.5 billion pesos for the program. Tama ba? Uh, let, let me yeah, pull it out. But around, just around that, yeah, yeah, 10,000 uh, peso unit cost, you multiply that by 450,000. Yeah. Kung tama ang aking pag-multiply, 4.5 billion. O magkano ang budget ng national uh, TV program? Yeah. So for the budget, uh, ay, ito na ba? Okay. Yeah. So uh, for the budget, uh, for this year, 2023, our budget is, uh, this is for commodities, 1.9 billion. And then last year, 1.6 billion. So, okay, that's just commodities. Yes, so, obviously, for... there are some other items in our budget that covers for the other items. Halimbawa, um, HFEP, may equipment, etc. May HRH component pa, etc. So, malamang, Sapat ang budget natin, sir. <laughs> More or less, di ba? Um, so, yun ang tanong. So, kung sapat ang binudget ng Kongreso para sa isang national TV program, eh, dapat walang expectation na malaki mula sa LGU. Kasi kung ganun, eh, talaga mag-fail tayong lahat. Di ba? So, that, that's my uh, my first comment. But at least, um, based on the pronouncements of DOC, this has to be treated as a national TV program, right? So, siguro, um, ibigay nyo na lang sa amin later on kung ano na talaga yung delineation ng responsibilities between Central and LGU. But keep in mind na based on rough um, estimates, palagay ko sapat ang binabudget natin. Okay? Para sa isang complete um, nationally administered TV program. My next question is on Section 1, no? Um, kanina nabanggit ni Ma'am uh, Dr. Sylvia Uy that you recommend transfer of leadership from the DOH to CHED and the DepEd with respect to the education programs. Tama ba yun? You said transfer of leadership kasi right now, ano sa panukala is so from the Secretary of Health magiging CHED. Tama ba yun? I mean, is that something that we agree in? It's in the law. It's in the bill. Yun, Transfer of authority, ma'am. Oh, you agree with that? Yes. Anong, can you explain further? Anong wisdom behind that? Kasi ako, uh, just from a you know, from a non-doctor's perspective, parang because it's a medical problem, dapat the leadership should still rest with the Secretary of Health. But you need to really closely coordinate with, um, obviously, Chad, meaning the SUCs, LUCs as well as the schools for proper implementation. So yun lang, it's a, it's a question. I know that it's in the bill, but is this something that you agree with? And you said yes, parang why? Because again, it seems counterintuitive, at least to me. I don't know about the rest of the members. Um, I'm in the National Coordinating Committee. That's the one that uh, oversees and implements the TB program in the country. The chair is already the Department of Health and the chair... Uh, Dep Ed, they're already members of that multi-sector ano, Mr. Chair, um, maybe we can ask uh, DOH, uh, baka we can refer to the UHC law where Dep Ed, uh, the, the educational um, departments and institutions play a very important role in the Baka it's in that light that that's why this was recommended. I just wanted to, baka we can look at it. Kasi in the UHC law, uh, pa, mala, nutrition, um, uh, lahat yan malaking part ang, ang mga Department of Education and things like that. So baka 
may kinalaman doon. I'm just asking just to to shed light baka nandun yung dahilan. Ang hirap kasi because marami na mandato ang CHED at saka DepEd. Sobrang dami. Diba? So parang on top of that, bibigyan mo pa sila ng mandato na uya, kayong bahala mag-educate. So parang it's not going to, of course, you know, if you remind them, they will not not do it. But then they, it's not going to be on top of their heads, right? Because they really have huge um, responsibilities as well. So yun lang. I mean, it's really an implementation concern, right? Yes, Dr. Fabella. So, uh, well noted, uh, Your Honor. And uh, just to just to add, uh, the original TB law uh, provided for the establishment of a TB National Coordinating Committee, and that was convened since 2019. Although, admittedly, medyo naging inactive nung COVID time. Uh, but in the most recent revival of the NCC, uh, we developed what they call the Philippine Accelerated Action Plan for TB, uh, wherein each of these agencies uh, develop their strategic objectives that are consistent with their respective mandates. So the PAAP document, uh, meron dong four sectoral groups, uh, wherein the agencies also committed to TB control pero ang commitment nila is something which is within their their mandate. So so I think that's one uh, basis for us to agree that uh, they are pursuing this really as part of their mandate initiative. Uh, Mr. Chair, Section 8 simply says shall encourage. Huh? So, again, I stand by my position. Hindi natin maaasahan na si Chad at si Dep Ed ay maaalala niya na taga-encourage siya. Kasi... Hindi niya ma-internalize itong problema pagdating sa kalusugan niya, di ba? So yun lang. I mean, that's we can of course um, discuss this further later on, but that's my position, Mr. Chair. And then I move on to Section 2, um, which uh, talks about the inclusion in basic education of um, uh, the principles and practices of preventing, detecting, managing, controlling TB, which uh, I, I completely support. Tanong ko lang is, um, are schools... Or how is it globally? Ano ba yung global best practice pagdating sa participation ng school? Do they do some TB screening? May mga screening activities ba na ginagawa sa school? Kasi di ba madaling paraan yun eh para mahanap yung mga may primary complex. Di ba? So baka naman, there's, baka naman it makes sense to also um, mention uh, screening activities that are school-based. Yeah. So in in terms of your question on global best practices, uh, with reference to the global guidelines of WHO, uh, there's no mention specifically of school-based screening. However, uh, they do recommend screening for certain high-risk population uh, in which malnourished children are part of it. Uh, so not necessarily the general school population, but uh, as far as I know, uh, DepEd has a nutrition program where they identify undernourished children, and that could be the specific focus of TB screening as a high-risk group. Yes. So, yeah. Mr. Chair, para lang we're consistent with global best practice, my suggestion is to include language um, to uh, to require the schools to do you know, some routine um, screening on those covered by the school feeding program kasi sila naman yung na-identify na na-stunted or wasted. And if, if, of course, later on, we can check with the author if they're amenable. But that's yes. my recommendation, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and yes. then for Section 10, um, meron bang TB Prevention Week, Doc uh, Alan? Uh, not specifically prevention, po, but we have the World TB Day on, in March 24. And then we have the uh, National Lung Month uh, for the whole month of August. Oh. So, so kasi baka pwede natin isama dito sa Section 10, yung mention nung dalawang araw na yun, um, making sure that uh, there would be enough funding um, provided so that uh, information campaign um, can be intensified on these two particular days. So that that's my suggestion for Section 10. Uh, oh, sorry, for Section 3. And then for Section 4, 
um okay, wala wala akong comments sa section 4 sa section 5 um Mr. Chair this is um with respect to Phil Health so may we call on Dr. Albert Domingo Mr. Chair I have a couple of questions Dr. Uh, Albert Domingo yes Mr. Chair may I know Dr. Domingo what are the how many TB related packages um Phil Health has as of today Right now, we have, uh, Mr. Chair, Circular 14, series of uh, 2014. That's the TB DOTS uh, benefit package. Um, the total amount per patient is uh, 4,000. There is a tranching, uh, 2,500 after the intensive phase, 1,500 after the maintenance phase. Okay, so anong sakop nitong 4,000? Uh, yung sakop po nito, uh, Mr. Chair, um, yung pong diagnostic exams, consultation services, uh, drugs, health education, and counseling. And this is regardless of whether you go to a public or private. That's so, correct. Uh, that's correct. health sure. center na meron ng libreng gamot sa health center, on top of that, um, covered pa rin yung... So saan na pupunta to? Sa health center? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Actually, uh, tama po na-identify na merong overlap. Uh, in particular, kung meron tayong uh, drug uh, subsidies uh, dun sa mga... Uh, so... Mr. Chair, um, the, the issue here is um, we've allotted 1.9 billion sa budget for commodities. The commodities na yon procure centrally ng DOH at pinababa sa LGU, sa mga health centers natin. But on top of that, um, and universal pa. coverage naman dapat tayo. So yung mga lahat ng Pilipino na may sakit, eventually dapat talagang feel health covered yan. So kung pupunta sila sa health center, pwede pang sumigil ang health center ng 4,000. So meron dong cover na 1.5. So nag-uusap ba ang DOH at Pill Health para ma-align yung uh, fund sources na yan? Dr. Domingo, is it na is it uh, being implemented now all over? Yes, Mr. Chair. So anong ginagawa ng Pill Health dito? Um bali ma'am, yung pong uh, kasi ating payment for TB, uh, hindi naman siya naka-allocate. So bahala rin yung facility. Uh, we we okay. understand this overlap. Yes, pero Doc Alan. So unfortunately, pa ma'am, uh, in the 2021 data, I haven't seen the 2022 yet. Uh, the number of TB patients reimbursed uh, under the TB dots package is equivalent only to 14 percent of the total TB patients treated. So mababa pa yung uh, maraming issues. Eh. Uh, many facilities are not accredited. Some are accredited, but they do not reimburse. Uh, some are able to reimburse, pero sa claims may counting deficiency, hindi na babayaran. So uh, because of that uh, low coverage pa, uh, the DOH is still continuing the, the support for the medicines. Okay, but the support coming from uh, the DOH covers itong, let's say, 10,000 pesos worth of medicine. At yes, itong... yes. Sorry, itong sinabi ninyo yung total cost, this is all in eh, di ba? Magkano dyan yeah. sa medicine? Uh, for treatment, it's between 3.8 to 8.6. Okay, so yung 1.5 ng PhilHealth hindi sapat, right? Yan yeah, ang sinasabi yeah. natin. Yes. So, um, pero dapat, ang costing natin, kanina na nag-costing tayo, all in eh. Nasa 6.18. So dapat, nineneto mo dyan, yung nakukuha mo sa PhilHealth, di ba? So Mr. Chair, kailangan natin mag- Kwentas claros dito. Um, maybe not now, but um, maybe uh, we just ask um, PhilHealth and the DOH to come together and submit jointly ha, para ma naman ma mapwersa sila, uh, Mr. Chair, na magkaroon ng meeting um, together um, to jointly determine kung paano natin i-resolve ire yan na hindi tayo magkakaroon ng double counting so that pagdating nyo po dito sa budget hearing natin come August, kung ano ang ipropose ninyo na costing para sa TB, e dapat klarong-klaro, yeah. nakaneto po dyan ang, uh, ang uh, nakalaan uh, mula sa PhilHealth. Uh, PhilHealth and UH, I hope uh, you comply yeah. with the uh, yes, bigyan po uh, natin request of uh, Honorable Kimbo. Pwede, two weeks. pwede po bang in, in two weeks ay makapag-submit po sila sa atin ng... Uh, uh, no, UH uh, and PhilHealth, uh, uh, sure. can you submit the uh, the data or the paper, the position, the position computation yes. uh, by uh, requested by Honorable Kimbo? 
Yes po, sir. We can. Yes, yes. Mr. Chair. We will comply. Right. And then Dr. Um, Domingo, so you said that there's only one TB dots, pero meron naman TB inpatient packages, di ba? So, yun ang tinatanong ko. Sa ilan ang suma total na TB related packages? Um, I do not have the exact answer now, ma'am, but I'm keying it in quickly. Uh, mahanap ko po yung case rates. Okay. Um, Pakibigay na rin ang dami ng case rates relating to TB. Um, my my The point that I want to make here is um, don't you agree na dapat merong specific language um, to ensure uh, continuity of care? Kasi ang consulta package, you, you mentioned this earlier, sa ngayon ba kasama na sa meds ang uh, TB meds under consulta? Yung existing package, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, hindi po siya nandoon kasi understanding is yung TB DOTS package yung nagko-cover dun sa... Sure, kung ginamit mo yung consulta package at dun ka na-diagnose ng TB, ang mangyayari dun is i-refer -re ka sa TB DOTS package. Yes, sir. Tama po. Right. Ngayon, kung naging malala ang sitwasyon mo, dapat ma-refer ka sa TB inpatient package by the same consulta provider. Yun na, yun ang ideal na dapat mangyari. So, Would you agree with me that dapat merong specific language here that um that refers to feel health um ensuring na meron dapat continuity of care meaning magkaroon ng ganong mechanism so that uh, a patient is referred from one feel health benefit package to another as determined by um your primary care provider We definitely agree, Mr. Chair. In, in fact, that's also the reason why we uh, wanted to adjust the language to refer to the HCPN. Kasi yung contracting standards, uh, right now, ginagawa na po namin. So uh, I think uh, next month, uh, test, if you field test na yung contracting standards, I will remind my colleagues na yung continuity of care. And it's actually good that we're looking at a specific disease to test the system. So mahirap kasi kung puro theoretical. Eh. So tignan natin in terms of a TB, kung nakakalipat-lipat nga yung pasyente na hindi siya nahuhulog dun sa mga gaps in financing. We'll do that, Mr. Chair. Yes, and specifically, Mr. Chair, for this provision, kung pwede sana dagdagan ng language um, on uh, the assurance of continuity of care um, through PhilHealth, uh, through, the, through the various PhilHealth um, TB-related benefit packages. Um, We concur, Mr. Chair. Next, uh, Section 6, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this has to do with the TB registry and the uh, monitoring system. So, Again, babalik ako dun sa punto ni uh, Kong Angela kanina na um, kailangan nag-monitor tayo ng outcomes. So dito sa third paragraph, um, it says the TB registry shall record the personal information of TB patients, TB type, treatment received, and the results and other data. Baka pwede natin makonsider, Mr. Chair, na imbis na in the results ay treatment outcomes na lang para specific na yun dapat ang i-monitor natin so that For every patient na mailagay um, sa ating registry ay uh, required ang DOH na malaman ano ba nangyari dito sa pasyenteng ito. In which case, dapat merong um, maybe additional language na uh, dapat responsibility ng DOH to ensure that the HRH requirement for monitoring of treatment outcomes shall be sufficiently provided for. So whether that is through the network of BHWs, etc., Um, dapat may ganun po. So yan ang aking suggestion, uh, Mr. Chair, for um, Section 6. Yes. If I may insert lang po doon, naalala ko lang po sa COVID, contact tracing natin, um, malaki rin po yung role ng DILG. Uh, so maybe dito kailangan din meron tayong role ni DILG. And actually, si DILG po, nag-deploy ng maraming contact tracers in the first year. Although nabawasan at nabawasan at nabawasan. Pero parang I think para yung sa monitoring po kasi, parang baka rin kulang yung existing uh, HRH na binabanggit po ni Deputy, Senior Deputy Speaker Stella. And then, and then, um, and then, um, <laughs> and then yung pong um, Uh, yung nagmamanage din ng aming STC, yung Site Treatment Center for MDRTB, um, sa ngayon nakamawa pa po kami sa PBSP. So may support po sila sa amin dun sa nurse na nag-aayos nag ng gene expert, etc. So I think yung 
ginagawa po ng DOH ngayon sa National Deployment Program for Nurses and Other Health. Ano, baka makita din po natin para po talagang by 2030, uh, end game na po talaga ang TB sa ating bansa as per our SDG. Thank you po, uh, Kong Stella. Thank you po, Chair. Yes, and then Mr. Chair, konti na lang po. Section 7, um, pagdating sa patient rights. So tama naman po, no? um, I'm very happy that this section is uh, being proposed. Um, kailangan talagang uh, matugunan ang problema ng stigma um, against TB patients. Pero may tanong lang ako dun sa responsibilities naman ng uh, TB patients. May responsibility ba sila, Mr. Chair, to um, report to let's say their employer or their or the school kung sakaling may TB ka kasi ano ba ang period of time na infectious ka pa rin right so kunwari you're supposed to take um uh, your meds for six months what's the period of time na hindi ka dapat lumabas ng bahay um hindi naman yan six months eh di ba oo parang two weeks lang yata yun two weeks right um after two weeks hindi ka na infectious so, so there's really no need to notify. I mean, kasi ayo natin na mag uh, cause ka ng ano, ba ng uh, infection sa mag spread mag spread ng infections sa workplace or sa school. Ah, uh, Doctor Pabella. So you're correct, Your Honor. Uh, two weeks of continuous treatment makes you non-infectious, uh, and then during the time that you are infectious. Uh, the infectiousness or transmissibility is really not as as high as, for example, COVID. Uh, they say one active TB case, which is not treated, will infect at most 10 people in a year. So, marami yun, pero hindi siya ganun ka kalaki. Uh, for that reason, uh, the program does not really have a recommendation on self-reporting because there's, of course, a danger of discrimination. Kaya hindi pa po siya recommended that you, you inform your employers or what have you. So the notification rests with the provider, ire-report lang niya. But uh, the personal information is not to be shared outside the healthcare providers. Pa. Okay. Yung um, infectious uh, process, yung sabi yung uh, two weeks, uh, does that apply to mo whether it's mild, moderate, or severe? Uh, yes, TB? in our guidelines, it's the same. For, for whether bacteriologically confirmed or clinically diagnosed, uh, we recommend to... Irrespective of the severity. Yes. Uh, okay. Pero for... There is just procedural na lang po to. There is just a recommendation that if you are bacteriologically confirmed, uh, that you can do a smear test, follow-up test, after two weeks. Uh, pero kahit negative na po yun, it doesn't mean cured ka na. What do you mean by smear test? Uh, it's sputum? another sputum test. Yun yun na na Ang baba Itignan ng yield po kung ng may sputum. bacteria pa. 20%. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh. Oh. So oh, yes. this is just to safeguard na oh. sigurado ka ng hindi transmissible. Pero okay. we recognize the limitations. Pa. Yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, my worry kasi as many of our workers are paid by day. So kung sinabi mong, oh, that dyan ka lang sa bahay for two weeks, wala silang pagkain for two weeks, right? So in which case maybe yun ang isang dahilan kung bakit nagkakaroon ng spread of infection din, di ba? So kahit na nagtitake sila ng meds, baka pumapasok pa rin sila. Um, so, yun, ano yung mga recommendations natin? I mean, kailangan ba natin maglagay ng provision on, I don't know, I mean, some kind of... Uh, How infectious is uh, TB compared to, say, uh, pneumonia or... Yeah. Viral exanthems? Yeah. Well, as, as I said, Your Honor, one, one active TB patient who is untreated may infect up to 10 people in one year. Uh, but mostly, this is mostly those that are in significant contact with him. So usually, yung, in other words, uh, how household long, contact, how long, contact the workplace. how long does it take for you, like say, kung magkasama kayo sa bahay, uh, there's uh, is no there exact... exposure sa yeah. one day or three days or one week before you can be infected? Or it depends, of course, on the resistance of the the recipient, the yeah. Yeah. the other member, then the healthy. Uh, but yeah. generally, it's not that infectious. Yeah. You're correct for your honor. Uh, you can be infected, but you will not develop the TB disease because you have a good immune system. Yeah. So among those infected, 
only roughly about 10% actually become active TB cases. Uh, the rest, we call them latent TB infection or I don't know kung applicable yung layman term na parang carrier. No? Yes. They have it in their lungs pero they do not have symptoms and they do not transmit. And many of them will not develop TB in their lifetime. Yes, because I see patients, ang husband niya is uh, advanced TB and yet yeah. yung wife niya, normal. Yeah, uh, yeah. And they have been together for, for as long as they've been married. Yes, po. So, and uh, po. just a follow-up, um, how many percent are the uh, pulmonary tuberculosis and how many percent are the non or the extra pulmonary, non-pulmonary tuberculosis? Yeah. Our non-pulmonary is very low. It's 2 point something percent lang po out of the total pulmonary. And uh, this uh, extra pulmonary or the non-pulmonary uh, tuberculosis are non-infectious or infectious? Usually, if they do not have a concomitant pulmonary, uh, pulmonary. TB, usually they are not infectious because and, the transmission is mainly airborne through the and pulmonary. And they do fall under the notifiable uh, uh, disease? Yes, they still fall under that. All, all uh, forms of TB. Okay. So it's just 2%, two, two, two percent, uh, a little yeah, above 2%. Yeah, a little above 2%. Okay. Uh, and, and Mr. Chair, if I may yes. just add dun sa question kanina ni Congresswoman Zala regarding the pagiging absence of work, uh, actually both SSS and GSIS, at least for the formally employed, uh, they do have the partial temporary disability benefit up to 30 days for yeah, TB patients. Uh, so kung sakaling wala siyang leave credit, ubos na yung sick leave niya, uh, they can file for that. Uh, of course, yung mga contractual or if they do not have that benefit, uh, we agree that's a problem also for them that affect their compliance. Um, That's that's great news. But uh, maybe, can you just uh think about it some more? And uh, just in case na meron kayong naiisip na pwedeng idagdag na provision that um, addresses this, particularly for those um, not covered by SSS, uh, baka pwedeng ihabol na lang siguro sa as committee amendment sa, sa plenario, if, if ever kailangan. And uh, um, moving on to section 9 naman, um, I've already tackled this earlier. This has to do with ano pa talaga ang delineation between... Um, what is uh, the responsibility of the central DOH versus the LGUs? So, ito utang nyo na lang din kung pwede ninyong isubmit sa amin ano ba talaga dapat. Kasi para baka pwede madagdagan dito ng specific language kung saan nag-uumpisa talaga ang responsibility ng LGUs. Kasi um, ang naka-indicate lang naman dito, LGUs are supposed to have a strategic plan but Ano yung context nun, di ba? Relative to a national program at meron na tayong pagpapatupad ng uh, matinde ng devolution. So, please um, make suggestions. Um, again, relating ito doon sa earlier na um, assignment ng listing ng responsibilities. Um, and then, on the paragraph that uh, mentions TESDA, uh, if I may recommend Mr. Chair, or suggest, uh, this is in relation to the earlier comment by our TESDA um, representative. Baka naman pwedeng, instead of in dealing with clients suffering from TB, baka naman pwedeng in relation to enrollment of beneficiaries. Kasi naka-indicate TESDA shall implement a non-discriminatory approach in dealing with clients. So worried sila na baka um, pati si test na magkaroon ng responsibility sa pag-finance ng gamutan ng kanilang um, TB uh, clients, uh, na, clients na merong TB. Baka naman pwede naman na ang, ang uh, responsibility nilang ng test is with respect to enrollment of beneficiaries, dapat non-discriminatory yung approach. So anyway, that, that's also something that um, I will uh, put forth as a possible um, uh, amendment para lang specific kasi klaro naman na dapat ang responsibility is either with the central DOH um, or or PhilHealth. Okay. Um sa so section 11 uh, which is on the completion of TB treatment as condition for retention in the conditional cash transfer program. So medyo for me operationally baka maging mahirap ito because anong definition ng completion of TB treatment? So, are, you, are we going to require them to 
show proof based on a sputum test again and an x-ray na recovered na sila. Anong nakikita natin na operationalization nitong Section 11? So in terms of the treatment outcome, uh, so one way is through a uh, certification from the local health uh, unit in terms of the completed outcome, uh, not necessarily with the lab results. Although, uh, just to note that in our position paper, we also mentioned that we defer also to DSWD regarding this provision. But just to respond to the question, uh, if, if this is something that is pursued by DSWD, uh, certification from the treating physician or the rural health unit might be a, an option po. So again, isipin natin na dagdag gastos yun. Hmm. So ito na yung pinakamahirap natin ng mga kababayan. So they just need to go to their health center, ganon. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, that's one way po. Or if the the so local social welfare office can coordinate directly with the RHU to minimize the cost to the patient, uh, that can also be uh, possible wherein the RHU informs directly the local CSWD uh, unit of the status of patient treatment. Uh, Mr. Chair, siguro... Um... Or, or maybe last na lang. Kasi may TB registry naman eh, di ba? Which is under the DOH. So dapat the burden of proof should not rest on the patient. Should not rest on your four-piece member. Kasi nire-require na kayo na magkaroon ng TB registry eh, na including treatment outcomes. So the burden of proof, again, to be clear, is should not rest on our uh, four-piece uh, beneficiaries, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, yes, uh, siguro to shed yeah. light on the query of Kong Stella. Uh, what happens usually sa four-piece uh, benes po natin, meron pong um, mga prerequisite, monthly prerequisite, nag pumapasok ng attendance, nag may attendance po sa paaralan lahat ng anak. Uh, I think once a month, if I'm not mistaken, once a month ay uh, merong clearance dun sa rural health or sa barangay health station niya. And then yung nag attend ng family development session. But I think yun yung uh, monthly report na kinukuha ng DSWD sa lahat ng 4 piece bene from the LGUs para ma-process yung kanyang uh, cash transfer. So I guess... Um, papasok doon sa um, uh, compliance check ng BHS or ng RHU kung saan siya under tungkol doon sa kung kung ilalagay natin to sa batas. Kasi ngayon parang yung health check lang, wala namang very specific kung ano yung dapat sinecheck. So yun from, uh, from the implementation point of view, ganun yung nangyayari po. So tama po na paano implement and sino po yung um uh, responsible uh usually CDSWD yung kumukuha ng certification from the school from the health station and from the partner family development uh session facilitator usually thank you mr chair mr chair thank last you. two na lang yes, sa uh, section 23 which is on appropriations um ito uh, anyway dadaan naman po ito sa committee on appropriations hihintayin po natin ang computation ninyong dalawa ng field health para if we need to um, propose amendments, ay kami na pong bahala sa Committee on Appropriations. But we will uh, await your submission in the next two weeks. And then finally po, Mr. Chair, pagdating sa penalties, which is Section 25, um, meron bang penalties on uh, discrimination? I mean, is there is there anything that... Na, na pag, Usapan nyo na ba yan ever na um, the possibility of um, imposing, say, fines on... Uh -oh. Kasi merong... Oh, yes, very strong. Correct. Merong anti-discrimination. Yes, so do you have a position on that? Meaning, is there a need? Of course, kasi hindi rin namin alam kung um, gaano na katindi ang problema ng uh, stigma cases among TB patients, but umabot na pa sa punto but na you feel uh, strongly about um, having some uh, penal provision with respect to TB discrimination. 
And that's my last question, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah. Dr. Fabelia. So for, for now, Your Honor, wala pa pong clear recommendation from DOH about penal probation for discrimination. Uh, what I can cite is there is a Department of Labor and Employment order uh, back in 2005 or 2007, uh, which does state uh, some some penalties for the workplace or for the company if they practice discriminatory practices towards their employees with uh, TB. Pero for the general community, uh, we don't have a recommendation yet. Yes, uh, siguro Mr. Chair, ano na lang, dagdag homework na lang din and perhaps for um, plenary debates. Kasi um, RA 8504 penalizes discrimination against persons with HIV. So I'm, I'm not sure if this is something that also um, a similar provision um, can be considered. Uh, maybe that's... Uh -oh. Anyway, that's something that I'm just um, putting on the yeah. table for for uh, consideration of the committee. Yes. And uh, that was my last question, Mr. Chair. Pasensya na po, mahaba. Salamat po. Uh, thank you, Honorable Kimbo. And talking about discrimination, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the provision on the contact tracing. Uh, is, there's a provision there na lahat ng na-expose are considered high risk regarding high risk patients. Kailangan uh, ano mga ba uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, Your Honor. In, in our review, uh, there is a provision that uh, screening will be done for close contacts of TB cases yes. together with persons living with HIV and high-risk population. So there are several provisions on that. And you say high-risk means a uh, member of the family who have been uh, with one member being diagnosed with yes. tuberculosis. Yes, Your Honor. That's included. Uh, ang, my, my experience, uh, and I'm sure other doctors din, isa sa ayaw ng mga pasyente, malaman na may TB siya. Uh, isa sa social stigma. So isang reason kung bakit ayaw nilang kumunta sa hospital ay kasi pag malaman nilang may TB ako, iimbestigahan pa nila yung member of the family. And then of course in a, a small community, Mama Marites siya. Yes. Uh, and uh, isa rin ang reason kung bakit. Kasi yung isang program you before was that yung mismong pasyente pupunta sa sa RHU kung minsan para inumin niya yung gamot. Uh, aside of course the inconvenience is yung sinong uh, sec secret dapat yun eh. And yet, here you are uh, hahabulin mo sila, iimbestigahan mo sila Tapos ilalagay mo sa special rec uh, registry na may ito, may TB yan. And then, of course, yung mga anak nila, tutuksuhin yan sa school na may TB yan. So, my point is, I don't know how to to balance between, of course, the ideal is to 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 detect those uh uh, high-risk uh, patients and those with uh, active uh, TB. But at the same time, um, respecting their uh, right to privacy uh, and uh, human dignity. Kasi sa society natin, just like uh, other uh, diseases with the social ano, uh, implication, TB is still ano eh, uh, may connotation na, na nakakahawa or sakit ng mahihirap or sakit ng ano. So I don't know if uh, uh, maybe you can think of uh, another way of addressing this uh, difficult uh, balancing act. Uh, And Mr. Chair, baka yes. nga ang sala rin pa, um, uh, pasensya na, would be mismo yung healthcare provider, di ba? Baka minsan may ganun situation in the mishandling of, um, for example, information, right? Yes. Baka siya pa mismo yung magmarites nga sa uh, community mm -hmm. na, di ba? So, oh, BHW, um, uh, of course, I'm not saying that the BHW are lahat tayo, mga chismoso-chismoso, but in a community, uh, di ba? Uh, ayaw nila yun eh, na malalaman. 
So I think that's one of the reason. There's a question ni Honorable Kimbo. Why are we still failing? Isa yan eh, sa ano eh, yung, yung compliance. And the reason for poor compliance is, of course, the inconvenience, the cost, and the social uh, stigma that comes with it. Na ayaw nila malaman. Lalo na kung wala kang nararamdaman. So uh, Mr. Chair, parang yes. kasing yung CPGs, kasi uh, I, I believe in TB treatment, having a TB treatment partner is part of the CPGs. Tama ba? Uh, Yes, yeah, sure, Honor, although we sort of rebranded, we call it treatment supporter. Because <laughs> it's, it's not the directly observed treatment na, na you have to watch, take the medicine in front of the healthcare worker, uh, but someone who supports and ensures oh. na, na you take it. And so field health, TB dots pa rin. Yeah, doc. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, yung direct, may problema eh, tama si Chair eh, may problema dun sa insisting on direct observation by someone else. So parang behaviorally, hindi nagtutugma-tugma alam mo, yung mga medical interventions natin. Di ba, pala isipan eh, dapat matuldukan. Pero as we go along, yung mayaman naman tayo, so wala tayong hindi dahilan na wala tayong pera, pambayad ng gamot, hindi eh. Di ba? Pero ang tanong, bakit pa rin siya nandyan? So, hindi talaga responsive itong interventions natin. Kaya medyo na-disappoint ako kanina nung sinabi ninyo, kasalanan niya ng socioeconomic factors. In short, poverty eh. Hindi eh. It's really, I think, there's something that needs to be done with the design of our medical intervention per se. And this is a very important factor to really think about. Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, Dr. Domingo. Uh, with the kind indulgence of the committee, I just wanted to uh, contribute to the discussion. It's also one reason why we are pushing for primary health care. Yung consulta kasi, disease agnostic, uh, wala, siyang, wala siyang label. Um, it covers a lot of diseases. Uh, I mean, we've been in a hearing that touched on psoriasis, on TB, and in previous hearings, uh, you have heard me, Mr. Chair, uh, saying on behalf of PhilHealth na sinasama namin siya. So um, instead of having a very vertical na program na TB lang yung nakatingin siya and like you mentioned na nakabantay sa TB, ikaw may TB ka, may registry TB ka na could promote discrimination, one particular way of addressing that is to put it as part of routine services. Na para sa isang health center, sa isang BHS, hindi alam kung anong sakit ni lumalapit. Basta lumalapit siya at kailangan niya ng serbisyo. Tapos pag nag-uusap sila ng doktor, sila na yung nagbubulungan kung anong sakit niya. Pero si doktor dapat capacitated siya for TB, for surround biases, for other uh, diseases. Kaya yung approach talaga ng DOH sa kami that is to integrate everything into primary care. We submit, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Domingo. Uh, any more comments from the uh, members? Uh, so, Mr. Chair, yes. mga homework ko na lang sa, sa DOH kung pwedeng isubmit na lang. At isama na rin ito, yung anong magandang, mag-isipan niyo naman, sir, kung anong magandang, uh, kung kailangan ba ng penalty provision or any other um, intervention to address this very important issue on uh, stigma. Mr. Thank you, Honorable Kimbo and uh, Honorable Garcia. Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, with that, I would like to move for the approval of um, the substitute house bill on our um, amended TB Act with uh, subject to all the amendments, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Consolidation, so consolidation, consolidation of the two bills. Yes, consolidation uh, for, the sub and for the final draft of the substitute bill, Mr. Chair. Second, Mr. Chair. So there's a motion by Honorable Garcia and Julie seconded by uh, Honorable Reyes that we consolidate uh, House Bill number 1106 and House Bill number 401 uh, and approve, uh, subject to the, uh, of course, to the inputs from the Department of Health, from the Field Health and uh, other stakeholders. Um, hearing no objection, the uh, motion is approved. Okay. Mr. Chair, yeah, uh, with the indulgence of all the authors also that uh, all members present here and via Zoom be made authors of all bills that we have tackled uh, this meeting. Okay, so there's a motion uh, by Honorable Reyes and Ju Julie seconded by Honorable Roque 
with the permission of the authors that uh, all those present here this morning uh or this afternoon yeah this afternoon today in this meeting uh and on zoom who wishes to be uh, co-authors of the bill uh be made co-authors uh uh hearing no objection the motion is approved before we adjourn we'd like to thank uh, the members of the committee who have been with us uh, this morning and this afternoon and of course uh, our respect uh our resource person from the department of health from the tesda from the philippine dermatological society rheumatology the psoriasis and other uh resource persons this morning thank you very much for uh participating in this uh in crafting a very important bill uh, yeah. of national very significance important. thank you very much uh <laughs> magandang hapon <laughs> sa atin lahat thank you uh, thank you chair oh, okay you. so uh motion to adjourn sir chair okay so there's a duly second motion to adjourn hearing no objection the uh, motion is approved Maraming salamat ulit. By the way, our resource person this morning is one of the uh, contestants of the Binibining Pilipinas Universe. Uh, uh, we wish her good luck uh, in the coming uh, election. Miss uh, Sar Sarzoso. Oh. Hi, good noon, everyone. So I actually wanted to talk kanina, but... I, oh, I'll please. take this time since oh, Chair sure. gave me the opportunity to, to, it's super quick. So before we leave, I'd like to leave you a message of hope and inspiration. As a psoriasis warrior, I was diagnosed with it five years ago. I experienced a severe psoriasis flare-up that covered my entire body with sores that bled and itch. And so I was fortunate enough to be able to get out of that comfort zone, that shell, that cave, as we used to call it, because I was fortunate. I was in a fortunate position to be supported by my family. So this is what I want to um, show to the Department of Health and to the government that if we are indeed supported and we feel that we somebody is with us, especially our government, then there is nothing impossible as reaching for your dreams. Um, it's ironic enough that a person with a skin disease is joining a beauty pageant, but because of the support that I have received from my community and from my family, I am now pushing forwards Miss Universe Philippines. And I would also like to uh, share this message of hope and inspiration to our fellow warriors out there that we are indeed lobbying for the psoriasis bill and that the government has given a positive response and with this um, other psoriasis warriors would be motivated and comforted in a sense that the government really does care for them and so i hope that you would take this chance to really put attention on the psoriasis patient so thank you so much we appreciate all your help and support and it's been fun i i, I enjoyed the experience <laughs> yeah.